This episode of PTG is brought to you by the HK Army Black November sale happening right now at hkarmy.com. And you are not going to want to miss this as they have up to 50% off the entire HK Army Fire Sale collection from now until December 1st. These are the biggest sales of the year all month long with crazy discounts including $100 off expand gear bags and 20% off on jerseys, pants, and more. Head on over to hkarmy.com and shop the fire sale right now. Let's go, PTG fam. We cannot thank you enough for supporting the companies that support PTG. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to LoneWolfPaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. This episode of PTG is brought to you by Transfuse, the hydration, immunity, and mental clarity booster and transcend nootropics. And with just one serving of Transfuse, it is equal to four of the competitors in one. And there is no other formula as potent as Transfuse on the market. And you are all encouraged to go and compare the formulas with any other products on the market and see for yourself just how amazing it is. Transfuse uses all natural flavors, colors, and sweeteners, and there's no proprietary blends, so you know exactly every milligram of each ingredient you are consuming. This formula was created to optimize your mind, body, and immunity, and Transfuse can be used as a high-performance multiplier for working out and any competitive sports or demanding lifestyles. Also, be sure to get your hands on the Transcend, which is a nootropic formula that improves cognitive function and can replace your morning coffee, pre-workouts, energy drinks, or energy shots. The formula contains lion's mane, alpha-GPC, teacrine, and dynamin. Transcend was created based off of research studies to help with cognitive control and mental function. So get your hands on some Transcend and some Transfuse today. Head on over to TransfuseUSA.com. Use code PLAYTHEGAME for 10% off and sign up for monthly delivery service for an additional 10% off to take advantage of 20% off these products altogether right now. Head on over there, support PTG. We appreciate you, and we'll see you in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. He came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This episode, we have a whirlwind of experts and amazing Long-time professional paintball players, pros, coaches, the whole thing. This is a gambit. We're talking about all sorts of great current events, fun stuff. You don't want to miss it. We have Alex Frazier, Blake Yarber, and Ryan Brand. So, without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. Everyone, we bagged him. We got him. Wow. Alex Frazier on the show. Thank you so much for joining us, Eggman. And thank you, everybody out there, for tuning in. How you doing, Eggs? There's no place I'd rather be. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the professional side. The big leagues. I should have dressed up. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, man. It's pandemonium over here. Yeah. It's just pandemonium. It's, yeah, it's laundry um, day, hence the uh, um, Central uh, Capital Edge Paintball League shirt. Yeah, we're in Dave Baines. My Did Mikey Bain send that shirt. to you? After, after he swiped our guy. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's so nice of you to be repping that Capital Edge Paintball League sweatshirt hey, on the I, show. I got nothing but love for those everybody. <laughs> well, we just we actually just saw each other out there uh, last weekend. We were playing at the uh, the big games out there, running around, getting lumped, dude. My head final battle, yeah, lumped. Tyler, dude. Tyler <laughs> ran up to bunker this guy out in the mounds, and he got like smoked going up there. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna go avenge his death and be a hero. 
and I like tried the same move and I got <laughs> obliterated and my balls I got shot right in the balls and I just I just stumbled to the sidelines in shame. I had way and, more welts on me from like three games there than I did in, in like three weekends yeah. of intense tournament paintball practice before that. For That's sure. Why I don't like those things, dude. Yeah. Anyway. Dude, but the great part about out there at like the big games is you just send it. You know, you know it's gonna be pure pain and you know what's gonna happen, <laughs> and you just run into yeah. it anyway, and everyone's having fun. It's like 50 on 50 or 100 on 100, and it's just great times. It, it is interesting on how some guys approach that. Like Tyler plays with the vigor of like a tournament when he's playing in one of those games. Like I watch him play and he's kind of like me, like wants to get involved, wants to get into the front and wants to like make a difference in the game. And you got a guy like Yosh who's like able to pull it back. And he's like, I'm not just out here having a little bit of fun and uh, just hang in. And, um, and you know, I, uh, the wise man. Yeah, totally. No. So, so <laughs> we're up there banging our heads into the wall and, and uh, Yosh is just chilling. Yeah. Yeah, there's a time and a place. The big games are definitely <laughs> definitely the time and the place to go totally. and just run it. And, yeah. and we I, actually I didn't had... really play at the tournament, so I wanted to get some. I was like, yeah, you know, I, I had get it. Anger. Yeah, yeah. And you got your ass kicked, so I'm sure you want to fucking get some. Yeah, man. <laughs> it, and yeah, I mean, you're not lying. Pretty straightforward yeah. there, but that's just the way it is. And and that's sports, I guess. But uh, yeah, it was great seeing Dave Bands, great seeing Mr. H, everybody out at Capital Edge. And thank you to Karen. Thank you to the family out there and everything that you guys do in Northern California for paintball, because that and extreme paintball are definitely, you know, the big Mecca points in NorCal right now. Yeah. And totally. I mean, I love going to that every year after World Cup because it puts it into perspective, right? Like when loser draw, everyone gets together and goes out there, eats a couple tacos, does the auction, like, you know, shakes hands. And, you know, like we were talking about before, like at the tournament, I know we're all like, trying to win but you know really in life it's what the real things that matter are are our connections and our relationships and you know there's there's ultimately no no time for bullshit because when you look back at the end of it all you're gonna say why did i waste my time doing that shit right mm -hmm. um but Absolutely. yeah i i uh i got nothing but but appreciation and love for you guys and really all the all the members of the paintball world and the world. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. World, world. <laughs> the whole the whole thing. The paintball world is the world. It's my world yeah. at least, you know? It's our world. Right. It's a yeah, micro I mean, Marcelo, you are um, I mean, I'm I'm sure you're on cloud nine right now. I mean, you're you are I mean you're coming down a little bit. What was that three weeks ago? Three what, has it been three weeks already? Yeah, Two probably. Three, yeah, something like that. And anyway, I was just I was thinking because I was listening to your show and I was I was thinking to myself, and you texted me like I can't wait to get back out there and play, right? Like yeah into next season and uh you know i was just thinking of you as a person and um you know how far you become or how far you've come on your on your journey um not only as a player but as a, as a teammate and a leader and a person and you were talking about like okay how coaching has changed your perspective on the game and you know you've really been making these strides in uh in becoming a true master um and uh I, I was thinking to myself, like, how do you view, how do you view yourself as a teammate and a leader? That's the, I, I just had a couple of questions and that was one of them. That's a tough question. Cause I don't know if I ever get it from the perspective of, of other people of how, how I, you know, how I would be viewed or how, how I guess how I should be viewed. Um, I think I approach it with a you already said it no time for bullshit mentality to me it's uh really black and white and i think sometimes that can be really difficult but i really believe in in things on the field and in concepts of how to play and when we're preparing for layouts i i am all in on things and i know that the time that i put in to get to those beliefs are are meaningful and once i once i feel that way about something i have the confidence to go out and actually um and do it and and explain it and um with this team it's really difficult because I, I don't know that i am a leader you keep saying that to me you've said it to me in the pits a few times um you know but it's we we have a team full of leaders so i think with our team it's a little different i i think it's it's actually more relatable to teams that i coach because in that situation i do truly feel like the leader you know i'm the one with the most experience on our team i'm not the one with the most experience uh or even the most wins um in coaching it's it's uh, a whole different you have the most golden barrels though 
Is that true? You got, you got three. No one else has three? Oh, I like that. Ryan doesn't have three. All I care is how many Ryan has. If I have more <laughs> than Ryan, then we're good. Nah, you, don't, you don't have three. You got two. Um, I don't know. I, I think being a leader is it, it either comes natural or it doesn't. If you if you plan for it or try to make it happen, it seems forced and it doesn't really work. I've seen that with players in the past. We've actually had teammates that have been like that, where it's like you're trying to force this a little too much. For me, again, it's black and white. It's about winning. Um, I don't I don't know if that makes me a leader or uh, or puts things that I do in the in a good light or a bad light. To me, it's how can we win. And that's what I want to make sure we're doing. I want to make sure we're doing the right things to win. Um, and I, I want that so badly that I will kind of do whatever it it, it takes to <laughs> get my point across. And I know it doesn't always come off the right way, but it's uh, it's just who I am. It's who I've always been from a very young age. It's something my dad really instilled in me. If you believe in something, this had nothing to do with paintball. This was long before paintball. This was just kind of about core values. If you really believe in something, wear that on your chest and just go all in on it. Don't let people, you know, convince you otherwise. Don't waver. Um, I think the part that he probably left out that took me a long time to learn on my own was you do still need to be open to other opinions and ideas because you might be fully bought into what you're doing, but you might be missing something. Um, and I, I do think that over the last couple seasons, this team has definitely taught me because there's been many times where, you know, we get to a field for practice and I see something, I'm like, it's going to be this way. I know it's going to be this way. And then I'm wrong, you know? Uh, and through that, I've realized like, okay, and you started saying this at the last event and I, and I loved it and I agree with it. And I, I kind of been trying to push this for a long time too. And actually in coaching, I, it's like one of the things I, when we start our practice preparations, I say, here's, here's what we think is going to happen. Let's be the best at this, but we need to be ready for it to change. And when it changes, we're going to be the best at that. And you, the word you were using was be elastic. You know, you kept saying that in the World Cup practices. And it's so true. And, and it's really how this game is kind of won and lost now is, especially in tournaments, there's such a flow to uh, how we get the layout, how it plays against the teams you're practicing. Because keep in mind, when we have one weekend to prepare, we only have one or two teams, maybe three teams if we're lucky that we play before the event. So you're only going to see certain styles and certain things that you do might work against both of those teams. And you're like, we have the game winning formula. This is, this is going to work every time. And then you get to the tournament and you see the Russians who do something completely different and completely shut something down. And if you're so rigid in your thinking and you thought your way was the only correct way, then you're not going to be able to make adjustments and, and, and win. And that's how you end up going home early on Sunday morning. Um, so that's something that coaching has absolutely helped me with. And this team has helped me with because, you know, I think we all, we all get really married to our ideas because we have done this for 20 plus years. You know, we've all had success in this, you know, Tyler, Alex, our whole team, Tyler, your whole team. We've all had success. All of the players on our teams have won. A lot of the players have been MVPs at different points. So it's like, everyone has a really good idea. You almost have this. It's like, well, no, I, I know that what I've been doing is working. So I believe in this. I'm I'm married to it. But once you once you fully marry something and and feel like you can't waver from that, that's kind of a problem. And that was the thing that my dad never did teach me. You know, he was old school Italian and really, really stubborn and rigid. And I grew up like that. I truly grew up like that. And so it got me in trouble actually a lot you know there were a, a lot oh, of you were like, you were a <laughs> troublemaker let me tell you out there. Like, yeah, Listen, I, yeah. yeah irishman walks into your restaurant you tell him to get the fuck out <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> dude, marcello, dude, I just, yeah. marcello was a you know wild a wild youngster but that also is what has made him such a great player as he's developed into adulthood and and to where he's at right now yeah you but know I, though, but i will tell you this like i, I don't know if you view yourself as a leader at or not, but I view you as a leader, right? Not, not in any, any specific aspect, but when you, I, I, especially during a match, like I look to you for the feeling of how the team is doing, right? Like when, when I observe you and I get a lot of chances to observe uh, these days, cause I'm not out there as much, right? So I'm watching really carefully what's happening with the dynamic of the personalities, right? And if I bring anything to this team at this point, it's, you know, helping with those personalities, 
you know? Bro, you're disgusting and, on the field. Stop, please. I know, I know. Oh, but hey, look, I mean, even, don't even uh, try to say Hey, that. look, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm like, okay, I, I just, I want the team to win. I'm there for, uh, of and, course. And yes, I'm a competitor. But don't short, don't short sell your, and my your ego stuff. is hurt, right? When I'm not out there, right? Yeah. It is like, I'm like, I should be out there, right? Which, which is good. That means I still care and I still want to be out there and I want to compete. However, mm-hmm. I understand that I, I can still be valuable when I'm not. And, um, and so, and, and there's a lot of great players that are in that position on teams with a lot of, a lot of other great players. And, um, and yeah, I, I, I do look to Marcelo for, uh, you know, sort of a lead by example type of guy, right? Like he doesn't do a lot of talking in, in like, you know, he gives his two cents on the game plan and all that. And skinny considers it and he discusses it and he's got a lot of great ideas. And yes, like, I feel like I've seen your mentality change and become a lot less rigid in just like, okay, how to play a certain field. Because we, we all three know you do something in practice 40 times and it works like 30, 30 of the times. And then you get to the tournament and all of a sudden you're like, what, uh, what, you know? And then, you know, if, if you're, if you're unable to accept that quickly, you're done for. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Yoda said it the best. It's, you must unlearn what you have learned. And that goes for a lot of things, right? Like, the stuff that you know how many t- how much has the has the paradigm of paintball changed over the past you know 20 yeah, years yeah. a lot right like and and right now like the style we're playing now i accredit impact like the the impact of like 2000 like 13 ish like when they yeah. were on that run mm-hmm. right like 15 16 yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah that that years of impact those are the guys that really sort of change the the paradigm or the or the way that the game is played and that's sort of how we're playing it now i mean we figured it out we fine-tuned it but you know those guys early on were and let me just i'll I'll make i'll give you a quick example like when we were on, on dynasty back then we'd always if we lost some guys we'd be like okay zone up and try to pull it back we're better player than players than these guys right and we'd try to win every single point now it's not necessarily that mentality. It's about clock management and who you're playing and the percentage you're going to beat them over a series of 10 points. And right. And I, I had this, I, wa- I was watching um, impact play somebody. It was in Vegas, actually the same field we're going to go to and impact was losing. And then they were down on bodies. And uh, I, I was watching and, and like mouse was in the corner and he eventually made a move and got shot and they lost the point and mouse came out. And Dave said, Hey, why'd you wait so long to make that move? And I was like, well, why the fuck did he tell him that? You know? And then I was like, okay, here's what they were doing. Right. They were saving time because they were playing an totally. inferior team. Totally. And not only were they saving time, they weren't putting themselves in the position where Dave had to blow the buzzer. Mm-hmm. Right. They were just giving themselves a chance to win on a Hail Mary move and then get, get it over. Right. So like, I feel like, you know, being able to and we took a long time to catch up to that i think that's one of the reasons you know we didn't win for so long is uh you know we were rigid in the way that a little we too rigid viewed the game um anyway i view you as a leader and i, I mean i i know you are because you know being a coach and being you know and i'm so proud of you like when i watched you in europe with those guys i never really got to observe you in that environment i mean i know you go to these uh like uh local tournaments and stuff and you have a great success record um but actually being able to watch you know what type of command you respect in those situations and even at one point you told ryan or these guys were like telling you what to do and you're like get the hell out of here like this is my show which i was like <laughs> you know what yeah i mean that's that's important right like skinny there, would do the same thing if exactly came over to him yeah. and started telling him hey do it this way that way but anyway either way i think you're a great leader and i'm, I'm really proud of you um I mean, same for you, Tyler. I mean, you really, you forged your own, your own path and you went over that. What, what are the chances you come back? Is there any chance? <laughs> I already told you that when I saw you in Capital Edge. So, so no you're way, me buddy. there's a chance. You're telling no. me there's a chance. No, I said this, this boat is burnt between me <laughs> and you. <laughs> hey, what Al, if I start I, a new team? Hold on. <laughs> I, do wanna, new team? I do want to ask you a question about what you were talking about. Cause I It'll feel be like called this- dynasty. Like Tyler and Dynasty. <laughs> Dynasty. You're crazy. You're crazy. Um, when you were yeah. talking about different ways that you can help your team not being on the field, and there's a lot of players that that could possibly 
have a better attitude about that or maybe you know like in the divisional ranks i know i hear it all the time from divisional players they come up ask me how can i get into this you know into this mix and rhythm and it comes down to being a, a great supportive teammate and just bringing really good energy and helping and supporting in any way possible right so are the what are the types of ways that you're able to to boost the dynasty camp through your awareness and and your your cognitive ability to read things and then you know share information or, or what is it i mean mainly it's um telling individual guys what i think they need to hear to be their best and then beyond that it's it's um trying to find nuances on the field that are happening in real time that I yeah. can tell guys that are not, I mean, they're not things that are broad. Mm -hmm. They're very, they're very, um, uh, nuanced, right? Like a very, like, uh, Hey, I think in this point, maybe take a look at this. Right. And it's, this is beyond like the coaching, like skinny's doing his thing over here, but I'm like, all right, what if this guy does this one little thing? Cause I'm watching, observing what mm -hmm. the other team's doing. And, and that's how those, you know, razor's edge moments are won are by, by like, I noticed the very first point of the finals, we had a plan where Arturo is supposed to go to that tower and that we were supposed to crunch the two back center guys, impact guys in the back center. Right. And I watched and Arturo didn't do it. He just didn't, he forgot the plan. Right. And I was like, bro, you forgot the plan. Now we don't know if that was a good plan or not. Right. He's like, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Right. And, um, because I saw the back center guy's gun on the snake side, huge. <laughs> hey, he's dead. For that guy to get yeah. shot, right? And right. I was like, "Why are we shooting at him?" I look, and Arturo wasn't doing it. So then I was like, "Look, don't throw that away, Skinny." Right? Yeah. We gotta go back yes. to that because he forgot to yeah. do it. Right? Something Skinny didn't see. He's trying to look at too. Everyone's right. trying to look at right, too right, many right, things. Right. Right. So I said, "Hey, man, don't go away from that. Like it's still gonna be there." Yeah. You know. So, so yeah. use it. And, and I think we did it some, I think maybe in the very last point and we shot, we did it back. in the very last point and yeah. Ryan shot the Dorito yeah. side of the back center yeah. actually. Um, so anyway, like just Second very, point. And, and, and props to Arturo, by the way, I mean, like played amazing spot, dude. Right. So like, yeah. and, and that's just, that's a testament to like, you got to earn your spot. You know, he, he, he outplayed me at my spot and he deserved to be out there. I'm not, I'm incredibly play. proud of Arturo because I, I I've probably been tougher on him on this team than anybody. Uh, and it's simply because I feel like Arturo has the potential to be truly one of the greatest in the leagues with his skill set, his dedication, how much time he puts in. I yeah. mean, he eats, breathes, and lives not only paintball, but the team. He's like the perfect team guy. You want him to do well. And so I, I'm hypercritical for of a lot of the mistakes. I'm like, dude, if you just would, if you just did this like you were supposed to we probably win and oh my goodness you play more you know and so to see him actually i mean he played phenomenal he he owned that role and not just that role but let's go back over the years of how many times we're like ah oh, well let's put our throw over on the dorito side and he'll do it like incredibly well you know or let's put our throw in this like weird spot up the middle okay let's send our throw to their side okay let's send him back into the snake okay like it's really tough to find a player like that and for him to finally have his moment at world cup, like the biggest stage there is in paintball, the biggest event there is in paintball. I'm just so happy for him. He deserves it more than almost anybody truly. Um, and, uh, you know, that also does kind of bring me back to your question, Alex, about, I guess, how I feel about myself as a leader. It's less about how I feel about myself as a leader. The only thing that I want from people around me is to put in the same amount of effort and not, I'm not asking anybody to do anything that I'm not willing to do for the game, right? And I think that that's how all players should approach the game. It doesn't need to be a captain. It doesn't need to be a leader. It doesn't. That's how all players should approach the game, right? Treat your teammates like don't ask people to do stuff that you're not willing to go do. Don't point your fingers at people because they're out of shape if, if you're not in shape. Don't point your fingers at people if they're not watching film or if they're not thinking about the game. You know, something that I love Archie is really brought to the team and implemented. And it's an easy thing to do that people, a lot of us probably do do, but until you verbalize it and you put it into, just think about it, think about the game, you know, and, and Alex, you actually have talked about it recently too, like spend time thinking about what went right and what went wrong, but don't ask your teammates to do that stuff if you're not doing it right. So for me, it's, I want to see if I can do more than 
anybody around me and see how far I can push that. How much can I do for paintball to make myself better at the game? How much can I do? And then in that, hopefully some people follow along. And if some of your teammates follow along, that's amazing. Probably you get some good success from that, right? But you can't, you can't ask for it if you're not doing it. You simply can't. You can't be in that position. So maybe that's a little bit better way to answer it. You definitely caught me off guard with the question, and it's a you know, tough one to answer because I don't, I don't think uh, I've, I've never really thought of it that way. Yeah, I and, mean, basically what you said, I mean, in, in short is lead by example, um, yeah. you know, and, and hold, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to hold someone to a standard, you better be holding yourself to that same standard. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had a conversation with Chris. You remember that? <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, everybody. You guys don't know. I just got over battling some crazy illness. We had the goat meeting last night. So the goats know, but, uh, my goodness, I had a fever for like four days straight. It was crazy. Oof. Um, yeah, it was gnarly dude. Um, so I'm kissing Ryan again. Remember, <laughs> I uh, I make sure to definitely not do that. You use your um, dental dance. You do that. <laughs> uh, remember that point against X Factor where they came down and bunkered Chris and and uh, and you got all the heat for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I practice. was like, yeah, and, and like we could discuss whether or not you should have called the switch. Or maybe that's right. Maybe it's not. What I what I was hyper focused on was that Chris could have prevented the whole thing. It, if when he went in there, he was aware that, hey, when I was in the Dorito right here, I engaged heads up. I saw the guy that's like 20 feet in front of me on the tape. Then I made an inside move and I slid in and he knew I was there. Like if I'm the player on the other team, that's my chance to go bunker the guy. As soon as they're making that move, I'm that's when I'm going to launch to make the move. And it's impact. There were down bodies. It was a three on four. So it's like, it's exactly what we're talking about. It's situational awareness. It's knowing that guy is probably going to come make a, a good player is going to make that move on you. So I was like, and Chris kind of pushed back on it at practice. I left it alone. I was like, okay, yeah. cool. But when we got home, I recorded it because, you know, Chris thought he got his gun up right away. I re recorded it. I was like, hey, Chris, did you watch that that point again? Because shout out to Vic. He, he films all of our practices and it's tremendous, right? Love you, Vic. It, it's awesome to be able to go back and actually watch the stuff that we we disagree on. And I was like, Chris, did you go back? Did you go back and watch that? Don't get me wrong. You made an excellent play. And it's it's not about like whether or not you played good or bad. It's that could you have done anything at all to prevent the situation? The answer is yes. I mean, that's the way that I look at it. Like if something like that happens, I'm like, well, shit. Yeah, it was a one on four. But could I if I would have done this, would I have maybe given myself a better chance to win the one on four? You know? And so it's like, if you would have went in there expecting that guy to come because you just slid in, you trade with him and then it's a trade. And now it's a three on two instead of a, you know, instead of that guy turning the whole field on us. And he's like, no, I, I see it won't happen again. You made a great move. It was good timing. But yeah, if I was a little more ready for that, if I was just ready for it, you know, it, it changes things. I'm like, that's all I was trying to get across. You know, and it did get heated. Like we got all in each other's shit, but that was yeah. a great practice point. Like, absolutely. I know absolutely. it's like you want to you want to be able to like throw your ego out in the moment, but it's okay. Like we've been doing it long enough together where I wasn't personally insulted by Ryan because we were both calling each other fucking idiots. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, How can you ever with him? But at the end, you're right. At the tournament, in the finals, I was like, Chris, I knew we were sending him up to that Dorito, and I was like, look. When you go in there, when you go into their side of the field there, make sure you have your gun up on that guy in the little box on the snake side. Yes. Right? Because yeah. I knew that I was in that situation and, you know, right. I knew that in practice, okay, if I got put in that situation again, this is what I'm going to do, yeah. right? I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wait for that guy to come once he's past a certain point, right? I knew they had that box. And I, I, Chris came in. I watched that guy's get exploded, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, again, like being able to go through practice with, uh, you know, humility and intention in our practices leading up to that tournament, dude, we got our ass kicked. I mean, it was split points, but relatively speaking, like for us, like typically, you know, we're probably win two thirds of the points in practice, but this one, we probably lost more than we won. Yeah. The best part know, of the practice close. was, was probably the hour and a half long conversation we had Sunday afternoon after practice was over. Yeah, but I mean, it, I, I always like get nervous when you do really well in practice before sure. the tournament. You know, for sure. So like, you what know, are we not seeing? 
we got to hand it to us. And I really liked coming up against Impact in the finals. That was pretty cool. And I, I mean, I don't know. Do you think, uh, Tyler, do you think losing Axel helped them a little bit? We had that discussion actually in the Discord. Uh, shout out to PTG World. And it's just like, Alex, you always say this kind of stuff. Like, you know, maybe if he doesn't get shot or this penalty didn't happen or this or that, then we wouldn't have won that point. Or, you know, you just don't know you don't how know, yeah. everything unfolds. But it definitely um opened the chamber to have uh you know talent go down that snake side and and uh we've seen some really good play out of the impact snake side in world cup and he obviously helped out the tauntauns going back to the team had a tremendous event yeah i mean it was like he was playing tauntauns pace the whole time when he was on impact right Mm -hmm. and like it just didn't maybe it wasn't i mean there's still putting up scores but i mean it, it still was maybe not the right fit and then zuba yeah, went in there more methodical played more impact speed hey like you got to find your identity as a team yeah, you're right and that takes all the players to to buy into that too well you're speaking on the biggest thing in the game right now you know it's about cadence it's about a rhythm and and together it has to be a rhythm together all five mm-hmm. players have to be firing with the same awareness and understanding of what's going to unfold on that field, how we're going to approach the flow of the game or the cadence or whatever you want to call that. And then, you know, playing it situationally as well, right? You got to like, like you were talking about whatever the situation presents us is going to dictate what we're going to do out here, um, depending on the score, the time where they're at and and where everybody's placed, you just, you go off those reads. But um, yeah, I could definitely see that Axel's pace was like a little bit, you know he's a, he's a race car. That boy is yeah, going to right. get. He's like, oh, there he is. Like impact guys are like, okay, oh, there he is over there. Like, <laughs> the race car. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. And then, speaking of uh, Arturo, he's having the MXL this weekend. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah. A couple of uh, I think our guys might be down there. I know Mika's yeah. down there. Dude, I know who's down there. Chris Lasoya and Mike <laughs> Pax is yeah. for sure <laughs> down there. Dude, <laughs> they're having a blast, it, boys. Eggman, what's in the cup? Uh, just water. Yeah, today. I'm oh. Gonna- I'm not ready yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, on, on the speaking of Spanjo, it's fake drinking. I don't actually drink. It. <laughs> so it's, it's a personality TV person. What what show? Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. Just don't watch it. Dude. <laughs> don't don't tune in Tuesdays at four p.m. Whatever yeah. you're doing. It's, you know, it's, it's so funny. Yo, yo sent uh, a message in the chat like, "Hey, let's have a, a little meeting. Maybe we'll get on a Zoom call uh, next Tuesday noon." And I was like, <laughs> "No, nah, I'm not available." But uh, Tuesday, let's do 4 p.m. <laughs> get yeah. our meeting then. We were salty about Mike leaving the team, and Ryan's like, "Couldn't you have just done it yesterday so we could announce it on the show?" Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Oh, we, need the, on. we need the juice, baby. Yeah. So breaking news. I guess that's old news now. Yeah, oh, I mean, we got to talk yeah. about that, right? Mikey, uh, Mikey has left Dynasty. He's going to Impact. Um, how did that all roll out, and how are you feeling about that? Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm bummed that Mikey's not going to be on the team because he's a great player, and uh, you know, I feel like he's like a, a guy that we took in sort of as a project and and sort of really um, leveled up his game, right? Made him a complete player. I think he really understands the game now. I know he's going to do really well on impact. And uh, yeah, I mean, I loved hanging out with the guy and he's nothing but, but classy and professional. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's a bummer because, you know, we invested a lot into him and uh, now he's going to be using the fruits of our labor against us, which is nothing new to us. So um, that's, that's fine. But uh, you know, I, I I haven't had the chance to personally talk to him. He snubbed me when I texted him, but um uh, I did. <laughs> he did say meet you at the 50 is what he said. See you at the 50. Yeah. <laughs> so, I actually but, thought it was fucking hilarious that you posted yeah. the video. I, how did you find that video? Oh, I, had you, it, I had I had posted it a long time ago. I know. I, like, I think I had a big video myself bunkering Mikey. So I threw <laughs> that up there. <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all in good fun. Nothing but love for Mikey. Like I I ain't dead sure. lucky either. If you, honestly, the way our team is, is if you don't want to be here, man, like we want to help you get the best deal you can and do what you want to do. And um, it, it, the stakes aren't high enough to sit around and be miserable. So if he's looking for more playing time, like on this team, you got to earn your playing time. So either go 
to a, a roster where they, you know, you're going to be the guy or, you know, maybe a roster with less people, or they're going to tell you, you're going to play for sure. But you know what? Hats off to skinny because he does, he makes the hard choices, right? Yeah. He really does. And I, I appreciate that. Not only in personnel, I'll, he, he sticks with his guys and he rolls with them, right? He sat Ryan at the last tournament. You know, he sat me at this one. Like, you know, he sat Yosh. Yosh was playing great, but he just chose to go with the guys he went with. And, and, um, I just, uh, on a team of, of stars, you gotta be able to eat a little crow sometimes. And I get it. He's a young guy. He's, he's prepared. He, you know, he's, he's ready to get in there and do damage. Uh, but if you're not, if you're not as perfect as you can be, you're not going in there. So you gotta earn, you gotta earn it's it. You know, it's not, it's not granted to you. You have to earn it. So, um, yeah, I mean, and it, in every event to too. Say la vie. Every event, you know, it it, it kind of changes, and I agree. Skinny has done a really good job with um, making those choices because uh, a, a lot of coaches they, I don't know if it's that they're afraid to make the choices or they just actually don't see it. They don't see who should be on the field at certain times, given different layouts. You know, I'm not sure which one it is, but. Um, I know from an outside perspective, looking into a lot of other teams, there's a lot of times where I'm like, that person shouldn't be playing in this spot. At least I think so. I think this person shouldn't be playing in this spot this many times, you know, like put this person in, you know? Yeah, like, I don't know. I was actually surprised to, to speak to that, that Tyler, you were in that center tower all the time. Like I was like, Tyler is their best gunfighter. And you, pro I mean, if I was the coach, I would have, I would have, once things weren't going great, I would have stuck you in that can. I would have been like Tyler, the can you get in that can, you play the guy in front of you, and you you're the you're the eyes and you're the you're the voice and you're you know, you're the outside guy. Um, I don't know if that discussion happened or not, but you know, the tower guy's like in there waiting for something to happen, right? He's not really mm -hmm. like you know, he's a decision maker, but not really uh involved in the game from like a a container controlling a point, you know, aspect. He's like waiting for a guy to run or he's like, okay, I'm going to go here and look this way. Like he's a decision maker. Yes. Important spot. But I mean, I put my best player by and large in that can. Yeah. And we, we did circulate through, I'd play the can middle, uh, the back center bunker. And we went through a bunch of different bunkers and, you know, we all made decisions together and yeah. obviously, you know, the, it, in sports, sometimes it doesn't go your way, but um, we're definitely solidified on the mission to uh, come back swinging into 2024 and get this thing rolling for the new year. I'm chomping are you, at the Are bit. you guys going to do any moves? Yo, dude, we're dancing. We're dancing on fire. We're dancing on water. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, <laughs> I mean, picking anybody up. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. I guess we'll see. That's that's not that has nothing to do with me. I just say yes, sir. I go out there and I try to be the best I can be as a teammate. And play I mean, the best I feel like that should have something to do with you. Well, you know, I guess like you, you should say like, that. "Hey, we should go after this guy." I mean, you're you're like a you're you're a cornerstone out there. Like you're you're the guy. I mean, if they ask me, I'll give them my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I'm always here. Like, we need somebody. We need a translator in the back center. <laughs> <laughs> somebody who speaks English and Russian. <laughs> yep. That's me, actually. I picked up a lot of Russian <laughs> playing with the guy. Give us some Russian. You got some? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, and Kamanda. Yeah, there we go. Those All are two need, powerhouses. Bro. Yeah, back center and team. Oh, yeah. and Zmia. Zmia is important. Yeah. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I, I got stoked when I say Mishka out there ripping it up, man. He's just yeah. like, He's a dog. Yeah, he's a dog. He's, a, he's yeah. a fan favorite, bro. He is I'm a like, dog. Bro. One of my favorite paintball players of all time. Without all time. A doubt. No, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. He is an absolute legend. All right. Speaking of World Cup, you had the Oasis party. What was that like throwing a party like that? Uh, you know, there hasn't been anything like that since the early 2000s with um, the angel and heaven and all that. So it's cool to see that kind of energy back after almost 20 plus years. And it's in large thanks to you and Hormesis and Oliver and everything that you guys are doing. Um, and that energy that you're permeating out into the fabric of paintball is super contagious. It's, you know, it's something that everyone can have fun with and enjoy. And it adds a really fun level of, I don't know, just, uh, just pure fun, you know, to the game, which we're seeing. So what's it like creating all that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a lighthearted feel. And honestly, like when they said, oh, we're going to do this booth and this party, I'm like, that's a horrible idea. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do not do that. And Nico's like, I want to do it. I'm like, well, then you do it, bro. He's in Mexico <laughs> right now, and then, partying, uh, ripping yeah. it up. Miko's out there with Chris Lasoya right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's like, oh, we're out of money. I'm like, shit. Um, but anyway, I, I do, yes, I, I do feel like the impetus there was make sure people have a good time and that. At paintball, really people, most people that are coming to the tournaments, I mean, maybe it's changed a little bit now. I mean, there's definitely an element of like, you know, okay, we're here to win and it's serious, but ultimately like the stakes aren't high enough in any of the divisions, including pro, I don't think. I mean, maybe at the last one for 40 grand, but um, to justify. I think the stakes are pretty high in pro. It's competitive, man. It's like... Oh yeah. I mean, yes, bragging rights, but I mean this, I'm talking about yeah. like the the financial stakes, right? Um, I know people take it seriously and all that stuff, but um, I, I just I wanted to bring an element of fun uh, that we haven't seen in it. Like, cause I remember going when I was a kid and being like, oh, my angel heaven, like, that's crazy. Like, like let's Rocky's in there with a hot tub with like two chicks. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, let me get in there. And you couldn't get in because like you, like that was like a yeah. sponsored players only situation. And um, so I was like, well, yeah, let's make a, a like a party type of deal with. um and honestly, all credit to Miko, but uh, I was like, here's what we need. We need to have, we need to make sure people are having fun. You know, it can't be like everyone's a VIP. That's what we want to have. Like, yeah, anyone can come in and hang out and, uh, you know, bring back that, you know, British inspired sort of um, fancy free, just go to the tournament and hang out. Like every, at, like at, at Sunday night after the tournament, you'd always have people hanging out, drinking beers and, and kicking it. And we want to kind of have that feel every night. And it was good. Yeah. We had like, you know, a bunch of people hang out and stay. Like, I feel like we could have done a little bit of a better job, like directing people from the divisional pits, like in there at the end of the day. But yeah, we had tacos, we had sliders, we were, you know, giving away food. And yeah, like to your point about the energy that that brings And yes, like it is expensive and it is like one project that we're doing to like try to give a little bit back, right? If you buy something from us, we're taking that money and we're we're throwing a tournament, one on one, one on one tournament. We're making a movie for you to watch. We are throwing a party at the tournament. Like that's where we're putting it. So and we're it like shows, taking man, it, yeah. we're kicking it back to guys in the in the in the in the uh, community. So that's like I I I wish like I wish we would have been embraced like that when we were little. So like. I mean, here's it. Let, let me find this email. Um, let me try to find it. It's really good. It was from yesterday. Um, While you're looking for that, is there actually going to be a San Francisco uh, shop? Oliver was saying that on the. Uh, we're day. looking at that. Yeah, we're 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 um we're uh, going to see if we can make that happen. We uh, we would like to, but yeah, nothing's for sure yet. Like having a physical brick and mortar store, we just got to yeah. get our ducks in a row a little bit. Smoke stuff. That would be set. insane. Smoke up. Well, like insane. what you said about the energy, right? Like I, I cannot deny that I feel like that positivity has resonated through the team, right? Like I feel like people are actually rooting for us um, when we're there and that man, that makes a difference. Like I, I, I can, I can, I can like, I can feel that. And I feel like some of that comes through the company and, uh, if nothing else, like that's a great reason to keep going. Um, and yeah, we're working on right now. This is just a mock-up, but um, we're working on a paintball magazine. That's and it's right. It's gonna be cute. It's yeah, gonna be epic. dope. I mean, here's like damn that photo is so sick. Let me show you like uh oh here. So like here's like a regular size magazine. Dude, so, that photo of Jacob right? is dope. Yeah, yeah check so, out the YouTube. Head over to uh, the Play the Game podcast YouTube and subscribe too if you haven't already. Yeah, hit that, smash that like button, smash it. So yeah. like uh, Dude, you're used to saying that. Come on, let it rip, <laughs> let it rip in here. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, actually, I have a, a call with uh, Kalen, who's uh, I think he's a goat. Um, yep, Kalen's one of the OG uh, goats. Gonna, we're yep. gonna talk about you know writing some stuff, and I know I, I'd talk to a couple, you both about it, and um, yeah. want it to be like sort of a collaborative effort and make something hey, that. You know I mean. Here's the thing, right? Like when I was when I was younger, I had this action pursuit games in my backpack and I would carry it around to my classes. Take it out, look at it when I was supposed to be look at my, you know, yeah. auto package, like mini mag package, like came with the remote 
CO2, yeah. like the whole thing, like all the, remember the tiles of like a hundred oh, yeah. different packages from National Paintball? Anyway, yeah. but there was also pictures of like features of guys in there. Hey, what up? Uh, Yarber! Let's go. Oh, like nice. story wants to tell you guys about some chickens on a fence. <laughs> um, and you know. for everybody, for everybody tuning in, we got Blake Yarber in the room. He just dropped in here. What's going on, Blake? How, how many people can hear this joke? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. <Careful>. Inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Next anyway, time. I, I, let me. I'll, I'll wrap it up quickly. I had this thing, and I, I'd be. I'd like show it to my friends, and they'd be like, "Whoa, you actually do that." You yeah, know, and then I exactly. showed it to my family and they'd be like, wow. And then imagine like when I actually showed up in one of these magazines, like I was validated, like that's me in the magazine. Like, yeah, like, what? Absolutely. like, you know, so like just being able to have something that you're not embarrassed by. Right. Or you don't have to pull out your phone and like convince somebody to look at your little screen. Like it's just <laughs> sitting there in your living room. It's uh, it's like, you know, beautiful photos and thoughtful features. Like there's no news. There's no tournament coverage. There's nothing that's, you know, you go to go sports for that, you know, for, you know, in-depth totally. interview to come to you guys for that. Right. Like it's just going to be um, exposés and features of people's like what they want to, they want to express. And then, you know, it, even if you didn't Love put it. that in there, these photos in this size speak for themselves. Like I, I, I took sa the same photos that creators put up on Instagram and printed them out in this size, like 11 by 17. And I was like, wow, like it just makes a whole nother statement. I mean, hmm. that photo that, that, um, uh, Dan Shelley just posted of you, Tyler, bro. I mean, blow it up. Imagine that. Yeah. And like life size, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. come on. So no, you're, I'm going right. to try to make it go in the next couple of months here and, and, uh, and, uh, see it's, it's like, you know, it's a lot of work and it's expensive, yeah. but I think that uh, I'm really stoked that with the amount of um, uh, interest the community has like reached out and been like, hey, like, how can I help? Photographers are like, yeah, I want to I want to help do it. And, um, you know, next year we're going to try to do it twice a year. So going in into the next issue with like real intention, um, I think it's going to be a fun thing to look at. And it's a bipartisan thing. Like we're not pushing for Mises. We're not pushing. And um, we're going to try to probably sell some ads to pay for it, but we're not, you know, pushing dynasty. We're not, we just want to get the best things in there that we can to represent people. People's eyes it, won't even be, amazing. they won't even be used to seeing like good, big quality pictures. Cause we're yeah. just looking at our phones. They're gonna be like, it wow, is like that. Look at that. I was actually thinking about how cool it would be on the, on the first cover just to get like, the copy of a like a of picture a phone of a size phone with a picture on it and it's all white around it with just the phone. <laughs> dude, that's what we're living in. It is what we're living in. <laughs> dude, that is I love it, dude. In, but there is no there are a few people that uh I mean actually Blake too, you're one of them that live in this world in a visceral way, Tyler. I mean, you know, Absolutely. you're present, dude. You are present and you're in it. And um, you know, I do I commend you for that. Like you are not one of these guys that's distracted easily. Like you are laser focused. Try to be. I mean, nobody's perfect. And it is a chore to to pretend that I'm always laser focused or like, you know, it's just not the way reality is. We It ebbs and it flows and you got your ups and your downs and we go through it all together. And that's why being a part of like having a friend group like everyone on the screen and the paintball community at large is so valuable beyond any i mean anything that you'll ever experience really um being a part of like as humans we need a tribe right like we all need we need we need tribes and this paintball tribe has been just one of the greatest experiences ever without a doubt yeah, i love that I, I did actually hear though through the grapevine that uh greenspan is actually in fact perfect yes <laughs> i have heard that quite a bit actually. <laughs> yeah man what's going on with that guy dude blake talk to me <laughs> Uh, you know, just, uh, surviving, surviving. Have you, have you figured out what kind of paper you're going to put the magazine on? Um, dude, Blake has a paper? podcast. What do you mean? What kind it's, of paper? This is Laura's S toilet, pa toilet paper. paper. <laughs> 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 um, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, what trees do they come from, yeah. Alex? <laughs> Blake, yeah. Blake was the only guy to talk to Mike Arena and he's like, I talked to him. And then we're like, what team is he going to? He's like, I don't know. I didn't ask. Well, how much is he getting paid? 
I don't know. I didn't ask. Why is he leaving? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what'd you guys I, talk about? <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought you guys were going to call me, you know, and instead you guys want to text me like 16 year olds. <laughs> Dude, Yarb, you got the nice mic. What's going on? You said Laura's doing some like uh, ASMR yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, she's you know she got that nice <laughs> English voice. She, yeah, she, she speaking. Like Let's see. Yeah. I'll tell you what kind of paper. Speaking on the mic. Nice. <coughs> uh, yeah, Yarb, you have like a background there. Everything. Oh, just, the Fifty curtains. pound husky <laughs> smooth book it's, white. It's cold. It's cold outside. Ooh. Actually, it was a nice day. You can tell Laura it's fifty pound husky smooth book white. Husky smooth. Husky smooth. That's the page. That's the 50 of pounds of it. Yeah. Big pounds. dog. Baby. Big I don't dog. Know. To, nice. to me, it was the it was the paper quality that sold the magazine. I mean, yeah, it's uh, on the on the scale of magazines, yeah, it's more of a, a book feel than a magazine. You think this guy is gonna spare any expense on the paper? He's going the distance. Yeah, it's that's why he called me in. He he wants to know uh, you know, you're the paper fix. expert. <laughs> <laughs> We need you. Yeah. So what's the temps out there right now? Uh, it's nice. It says it's 47. 47. Nice well, 47. I have a fire on outside, so maybe maybe 40. Yeah. Oh, man, it gets cold up there. Crazy cold up there. But at, it, you have the sauna, so, you know, you're chilling. You just built that thing up. Yeah. Yeah, I was just uh, stocking all the wood today, playing with the wood stove a little bit. There we go. Be careful, dude, please. I mean... Uh, what do you mean? Be careful. What, oh, like well, this good. time last year, we lost you for the first event of the season. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No, that what, when was, oh, that was February. <laughs> yeah. It it'll like, get right. a little bit oh, older. Was that last year? That was yeah. last year. So wow, cool. dude, you're doing great. <laughs> Seems like an eternity ago. It's crazy. It's about 20, time, y'all. 2022, dude. I don't know. Yarber. No, it looks good. The thumb is good. Everybody check out the thumbs. Because you almost didn't have that that thumb. Was it the right or the left one? Left one. The left one, dude. And uh, yeah, thankfully you were able to pick up that that nub. Right? Is that what happened? No way. I I just read this article that this God, that's woman is suing like a, a Wendy's or sorry for I don't know what I'm gonna I don't know what fast food chain for uh she was eating a salad and started chewing on a finger. And no. spit it out and said, Oh, that's a finger. That's disgusting. So she sued. Come to find out, somebody at the restaurant chain had their finger cut off in the kitchen and was taken to the emergency room. Like, why didn't they take the finger with them? I know Blake took his finger, yeah. his thumb with him <laughs> to have him put it back on. Well, not only did they but, not take it, but they let it get in the they, food. They let it, yeah, what? it's unbelievable, right? Oh my God. That's Oof. crazy. Oof. That's crazy. Wow. Well, I'm I'm glad that you Yarber, your hand's good. And a... Hopefully they like gave the finger back and she's able to like put it back on there. Or is it too late? How long do you have? Oh, Yarber? it's too late. Do you know? That's a good question. I mean, that uh, it happened at like 3 p.m. And then I didn't go into surgery till 8 a.m. the next day. So it seems like well, a long time. But you have to have like, obviously, you yeah, can't just like have it sitting in someone's thing. salad. You know, yeah, it's yeah, got to yeah, be yeah, like yeah. taken care of. Not yeah, I mean, not getting chomped on by someone else. I mean, <laughs> oh man, is it a that's life sale level. that you're supposed to throw it on ice? I don't know. No, I think that's I, I think I think that's sure. legit. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. That's uh, that's legit. Oh man. Well, glad. Thankfully, you're doing good, Yarb. Stay away from the uh, you know, stay away from whatever <laughs> happened. <laughs> and then yeah. he still uh, brings his like knife sharpener to the tournament with him, just in case he has to cut a cardboard box and. He wants it to be extra sharp. Are you? This is brute life. It's brute lifestyle. We it know is brute this. lifestyle. That's right. <laughs> it's the brute which, lifestyle. Which which knife do you want? I got a couple yeah. on me. You know how it goes. Come on. <laughs> He's not playing. I love Yarber it. is an absolute beast. And speaking of brute, what's going on with brute? You guys got some new projects or anything? You guys are cooking up. I know you got uh, the. Uh, yeah, we just started that uh, soap subscription. So twenty bucks yeah. a month, and you get two go. bars of soap. One classic, one flavor of the month, scent of the month, and a uh, a lip balm. I've got mine in my shower right now. Nice. That's straight from a uh, Fight Club. Remember Fight Club? They were making that soap. You know what I mean? Who's seeing it? You're Nobody's selling their oh, yeah. asses back to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, dude. 
<laughs> and soap is expensive these days, man. It is crazy yeah, expensive. So to get stuff. everything is dude. To get the good stuff, like what you're uh producing, Yarber, mm -hmm. for that price is crazy. And it's on a monthly subscription. So yeah. definitely support Yarb, support Laura, and shout out to Laura. She is the absolute best in everything she does with Brute. And uh, we can't thank her enough and you for having our like PTG stuff at the tournaments at the Brute booth. So thank you guys for everything that you're doing. Yeah, no problem. Love you guys, it, you know, I got to give it to Laura because she's going down to the farm, you know, this little farm and she's dealing with the farmer and, and getting the soap lined up. It's, it's, it's cool. It's yeah. It, I think that's how it should be. For sure. Dude, you know, it's we, all we really have our, our, our finger on the pulse. Mm -hmm. And so it's good. Sunscreen as well. Um, you guys got the best sunscreen, the brute sunscreen, and the chapstick. I mean, everything that you guys make is top. The chapstick is my favorite. It is yeah. literally my favorite. I take it everywhere with me. I have I have like three different sticks that I keep in different bags: my gym bag, my travel bag, my backpack. Here, it's like that stuff's phenomenal. It's amazing. The the one that we came out for the champs club that that really unique one. Yeah, uh, I wish we could sell that one because that's my favorite flavor now. You know, but oh. <laughs> it, it was a special edition. But that was cool. The the flavor was champagne. Oh, the flavor God, of winning. Yeah, the champagne. flavor. The flavor of winning. What a great! That's a great marketing deal right there. <laughs> champagne, the flavor of winning. Dude, I'm sure you can <laughs> run that flavor somehow. You know, it it probably be a big seller. And congrats, dude. You're you're gonna be a dad bro you're gonna be I a did dad. i did yeah, it yeah. dude did i it. did it i mean so, we did it we did it al, yeah 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 al you're you're not having it you're gonna be there for the first event right yeah i'll be there <laughs> so i think we're gonna be down like four of us three of us i'll be good uh dude. lake when are you do do they have hospitals in vegas just bring her there I just yeah. get induced, right? Like, make sure that you know, set the date. Get induced. So, we're, so we're that's what Sahara that. said. <laughs> that, that's what Sahara said. She get was induced, like, bro. "I'm getting induced." They could plan it, and I'm like, "They can." Ooh, that's a thing. You get induced. Oh uh, yeah, go ahead. Get in <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, we're doing the old school. We're doing it in the manger. I that dude. You know what's so funny is Sahara said that, and I was like, "Blake's Blake's delivering the baby in their yeah. bathtub <laughs> in straw. They're gonna be out there in the straw, you know." oh that's so it. funny yeah. i swear yeah. i swear how excited is laura dude she's got to be over the moon to yeah she's, be she's doing great you know uh you know she's you, the you, best you, she's gonna be such a good mom love laura i'm, I'm excited I'm, I'm nervous naturally of course yeah it'll be fun i it mean will. i i do feel bad for her because she's she's she married a kid you know and now she's gonna have a yeah. kid <laughs> Just yeah, chalk the first couple of years up. Just chalk them right up. You know, it's just pandemonium. Just screaming, pooping, love, dude. Everywhere, just like yeah, I was a pro. Dude, I had, <laughs> I had my uh, my little brother was in town for Thanksgiving, and he had both of his daughters, and they're adorable. I love them. They're two and three years old. Here for a week. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That they is stayed tough. at your apartment. <laughs> they didn't, they, they didn't even no, stay no, they didn't no. even stay at my apartment but they were over every day so they stayed at, they were down here um the the young the uh the three-year-old has quite a bit of health issues she goes to the ronald mcdonald uh hospital down here and they put them up it's really nice they like uh board them they have you know free meals every day it's it's a great facility but they'd be at my house pretty much all day outside of that late into the night and it's like the whole time they were here it's, i'm like oh my oh don't touch that oh yeah. ah, don't put that in your mouth oh, oh don't do that oh god yeah. so funny paul my little brother his wife amber at one point was like girls you can't touch any of Uncle Marcello's stuff. i'm like no, they can touch things but they're like throwing things you know it's like this is the difference Dude, i gotta go on for you so i was uh so the other day my car got my, my car was parked on the road and I got smashed into by this drunk oh, guy. So I can't no. drive my car. It's just sitting oh. there with like busted tires. So oh I got borrowed my sister-in-law's car and I've got Sebastian, my two-year-old, and I put him in his car seat and he's like, I got the keys. And I'm used to my Tesla where my phone is just the key and it's like you don't yeah, have to yeah. deal with keys, right? So I'm letting him hold the keys to, to play with to distract him. And I close the door and he locks the door, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Like he's locked in there. 
He's holding, and I look in the window, and he's like holding the key in his hand, and he's got he has a toy cell phone, and he's like holding that in his other hand, right? And he's like, I'm like Sebastian, and he looks at me, and I'm like, press the button, and there's four buttons on the key, right? So it's like he's got to be it's a one in four chance, right? So like, and the unlock is little, the lock button's like way bigger. Oh, like, did you just say Sebastian? Like yelling because the window the is up. Yeah, and I don't want to freak him out. Yeah. I'm like, so what happened, button, buddy? Like, <laughs> hold on. So did he press the button? Yeah, he pressed it. Oh okay, my god! There you go. yeah, I was like, out of breath. Oh, open the door. I'm like, give me those. And then the next time I was putting him in the car, he's like, keys? Have it? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> keys? Have it? I'm like, that's yeah. hilarious. That's actually really funny. Press oh. the button. Yeah. It's the actually, button. Man, it's serious business. You got to be careful with the. Uh, the old cars there it's yeah. you have to call the fire department real quick you know they come oh, I know. And break yeah, the windows. I was like, oh, i'm gonna have to break this window then i have to call liz and be like yo thanks for letting me borrow your car but i smashed the window yeah <laughs> <laughs> eggs eggs full launch what, what full was launch. your favorite part of world cup both of you guys uh man i got sweaty over at the gel blaster booth that was fun <laughs> that was Hell, fun, yeah. actually that was a that was a that was a lot. We took the rifles, me and Oliver, and, and we were just hunting for feet. We took our shoes off while we were playing. You know, just just those things actually, they, they sting oh, yeah. a little bit when for you sure. get shot in the toe. Yeah. No, my kids, Max, he has no sense of like what's too much. So he just he just holds the trigger down from 2.5 feet away, <laughs> just blasting your back 90 times. And you're like, yo, my back, you know, like. I look at my back in the mirror and there's literally like 150 like little welts on my back. And he's like, you know, let's go play some more, uh, some more gel. I'm like, all right, let's go. This sounds great. He just blasts, dude. He shoots his brother in the lips. Theo's lips are just getting roped. And Theo's like, what's up with this guy? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know. <laughs> he's, um, he's off the Richter scale with those. <laughs> I got to say my favorite part was probably watching um, some of the guys win. Like, you know, Harry, Chris, like, obviously you, Marcelo, like, that's a that's a tremendous moment for you, right? Like, winning World Cup and being MVP twice in a row. Um, that's pretty, pretty special. Um, and not only MVP, you got the clean sweep. I mean, you got the move, you got tournament and finals. So that's, it was I mean, crazy the stuff they uh, kept bringing out on stage. But, but yeah, like, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> there's a um, there's a certainly a sense of accomplishment for me when I see uh, when I see that. Yeah, you know, even honestly, when other teams win that are have guys on them that that uh, have I come know through that, here or yeah or yeah. that have you know been yeah e either on the team or you know I have a relationship with them like there's something really um and I, I obviously i haven't always felt that way but now i feel a little bit differently about that um and yeah like i mean i had a moment when i was filming in the last tournament or two tournaments ago when i wasn't playing in philly and i was just like recording and i stayed obviously to shoot the edwards brothers because that's where we're covering those guys and i was filming them celebrate and um and chad bougier was up there and like, I don't know, like I didn't win. We, we didn't win. I wanted our guys to win. Right. But in that moment, I was like very empathetic to them. And I actually like started to, to like, you know, feel emotional because like I was genuinely happy that they were happy, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, as a competitor, but it I, means I, that I, you're just reaching yeah. new levels, Alex. Yeah. That means, yeah. and it, it's, uh, it's, it's okay to be, you don't have to hate that someone else wins. Maybe hate that you lost, but you don't have to hate that someone else wins. You know, yeah. I think it's okay to appreciate that and appreciate other people's victories and learn from it and say, you know what, look at them experiencing this great thing. That's awesome for them. If we want to experience that great thing, we have to earn it. And hopefully we do that next time. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of your media project, I want to talk to you about that eggs. You've got a couple of them that you're cooking up right now. Um, is there any news that you can break on when developments will be happening on those or anything that's going on in particular? 
Uh, so on the project that we're working on together, it's like the action sports um, sort of, uh, you know, vignettes of mm -hmm. of paintball life and different characters. That one will probably be, co be coming out before the Iron Kids one. Um, Miko's in. He's going to dig into editing um, uh, when he gets back from uh, Mexico. And he's like, I need this. <laughs> I need this $8,000 editing hard drive. I'm like, oh. oh. I'm like, okay. Well, you I'm guys like, have you, so you much footage. You can't even reuse that. You can't even reuse the hard drive. Like the movie lives on there and that's it. You like you just stick it in storage after that. So that's crazy. Whatever. Um, but you know, we, we have um we have uh um documents out to the uh, record labels to try to get music li music licensing, and then we have uh editing and we're gonna start digging into that and you know hopefully we'll have something sooner than later i mean it'll definitely be done before mid-year miko's telling me that the vegas but i was like dude there's no way oh, um be sick but, so yeah i would be sick but it's got to be right like i'm not for sure i'm not for like sure. anyway and right over first thing we're, we're planning on uh putting out in um probably world cup amazing uh, and the iron kids thing you said yeah world cup mm -hmm. sick mm -hmm. the dude, uh, that trailer you showed us at World Cup. That trailer gave me the chills, dude. Yeah. Good. Incredible. Like, yeah. truly incredible. Yeah, no, we got some gold in there. You guys have been... How many terabytes do you guys have? Uh, Well, the Iron Kids thing is much less because that's mostly archival. But yeah, I think there's like close to 200 terabytes for the uh, for the um, other one. Because, you know, you're sitting... You got, I got three guys out there sitting there with, you know, cameras that are, you know, shooting 8K in 120 frames a second. And they're just waiting for something to happen, right? So, like, wow. yeah. you know, if we know when the action is going to happen, you can press record and get the action. But paintball's not like that. You're like, okay, I'm, hopefully something happens, and then, you know, <laughs> but we've done it. You just have to do, you know, accuracy by volume. So we, we do. We have some amazing shots, and I honestly, I have any. I've only seen the few shots I've seen are when I was at the tournament or at the practice, and Migo or Pat is like, come over and look at this, and they replay it on the screen for me. Otherwise, <laughs> it goes into the hard drive and goes away. So, like. I mean, I don't really know what we have, but those guys say it's good. Hopefully, so, they, uh, I would imagine that you guys are going to use AI to scrub this thing. How 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 else do you scrub two hundred terabytes of information without? You got to watch it. It's the only way. So, but can't you use AI in in some way to to gather clips and like so you don't have to sift or no? I'm not that guy. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Well, that's uh, why you sure children. That, I'm not trusting AI to <laughs> tell me what's a good paintball clip. Well, it wouldn't mm -hmm. tell you which one's a good one. It would just take all of them and cut the cut the beef out, I guess, or whatever, and and uh, or cut the fat out and and give you the the premium cuts there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be some type of AI there that does that. Premium cuts. <laughs> give me the That's fillet. That's what we should call the movie. Premium cuts. I like that. <laughs> That's great. Write that down. Premium, premium cuts. cuts, baby. Yeah, Let's go. Something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I know that you had been playing around with like a name as well. Is that something you're willing to talk about? The uh, name yeah, we don't it? have a name. No? Okay. Um, we had a good one. And then I realized it, it was also Tom Brady's documentary. So I'm like, oh, oh we no can't way. use that. TB12 wasn't <laughs> available? No. Yeah, no. It was called it Man in the Arena. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But, but, right, right, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that, so, that documentary was really good, too. I haven't they did that. on that. Check it out. There's a lot of good sports documentaries out there right now on, you know, Amazon and um, Netflix, other places. They got a lot of good stuff out there from just the top athletes to ever do it. You know, getting inside the the headspace and seeing what they're thinking about. It's really cool to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, like uh, we definitely have some of your good uh, jump shots there that we captured in the can. Um, really? Yeah. Amazing thing! Somebody, Dude, was, somebody got you on someone, the jump shot. Ty, but it, I just it wasn't uh, media. it wasn't like uh, they meant to. It was them shooting like they didn't mean to shoot up there, and then I went up to take a shot, and it and I got shot. How I was do you like, know yeah. that? Because there was no paint being shot at the time, no paint at Who all. Who were you guys playing? That's true. Uh, it was Tauntauns. Honestly, was it? No, it wasn't the Tauntauns. I can't remember exactly who it was, but I know vividly in the moment reading, you know, using my ears and my sight to look around and I'm like, okay, take a peek. And there was 
and it wasn't like somebody was like right on the other side of the bunker. This is from back middle or like yeah. the can, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So they uh, probably meant yeah. to like shoot a cut or shoot the edge and a paintball went over the top. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. This is insane. <laughs> it, was wild. it was such an, yeah. it was such an interesting shot. No, no. <laughs> the power just went out. No way. Oh. The, fuse, the fuse just Dude. blew. I was wondering Exit what either. happened on your. I'm on a video. laptop, so I'm good. But yeah, are you all I good? Have my heat. I have my heater on because it's cold as shit here. So, I was like, <laughs> dude, yeah, you're. Anyway, you're the guy who was question. shooting at you, like, was like, there was nobody for... shooting at me. That's the thing. He was shooting for the parking lot. He's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna spray the parking lot. Uh, but hey, that's paintball once again, sports man. You know, it, like, it was. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It was funny because, you know, I was standing right behind you watching the game, and I'm watching you play, and you take this jump over the can, you come down, and you turn around, and you got this cyclops on your goggles, and you just, yeah. you're, what in the? Well, no, I went like, that's bullshit. That's what I said in my head. <laughs> this doesn't said, count. Why? I was like, this is insane. You got to be, I, in my mind, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. That's exactly what I was saying in my head. <laughs> People just, know though, if Tyler's in the can and you give a and few I'll give decide, that to you. But... I'll give that to you. People do know. Say what say I get into a one-on-one -on -one battle with somebody or or this, that, and the other, and we're up close. I know that they know that's gonna happen, and, and that's part of the the repertoire. But in this particular instance, I'm telling you, this was like the luckiest shot I've ever been shot on. And I was like, oh my god, you can't even I can't. it's just one of those things. In a lot of sports, it's like that too. And I've had paintball days when it's like this. It's just shit. Ain't going I was like, way. what you know, the hell? There's was nothing that? you did wrong. It's just, <laughs> it ain't happening that day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it ain't happening that day. You know, that that's just the way the cookie crumbled on that point. But you come back and you come back poised. You shake it off. And like we would always say, you know, brand new. Everything's brand new. Brand new moments. Go back out there, refocus and, and give it another full effort point. Every single time you step on the field, full effort, big effort, big thoughts connecting and and you that's all you can do when you step out there into the arena to play paintball is try to get as much information and, and play the best paintball that you can and hope that when you jump over the can there's not rogue paintballs well, flying your way. Never, i will never have that problem but um, yeah that's true <laughs> I, i'm gonna i'm gonna let you guys go but i will say this i was thinking about my other my favorite moment when you asked me that of the tournament the other one was um before uh, on the morning before we played the the russians um in the huddle uh just looking at you guys in the eyes and um and knowing where we were all coming from was uh was pretty good i mean there was this kind of a singularity there um and i think that uh those moments are rare and um definitely uh get the chills talking about it thinking about it you and, did a uh, excellent job as you have the last couple seasons of commanding the huddles and saying the right things at the right time not too much not too little being exactly what we needed um and that's a, a difficult thing to do it's an art and it's something that you've gotten really good at and it's incredible and it was awesome to uh see you do it again at world cup on the biggest stage and get us together you know and get us get us hyped and uh not just hyped you know there's there's a difference you know you you do it in a very unique way which is special it was awesome yeah. find the why right what, what, you gotta find the why 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 that damn grass, it was blue as hell. <laughs> I <laughs> love you guys. Baby. Hey, and 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 PGG, man, you guys are the best. Un unrivaled. Yes. Dude, we appreciate you, man. Uh, in <laughs> case y'all didn't know, Alex blesses the goat squad with crazy bands every single month. So if you're not a part of the goat squad, you're missing out on that. And we can't thank you enough, eggs, for everything that you're Just doing. Just let me know and I'll reload you guys. Dude, thank you, brother. We out. are almost due for a reload. I got I think, you covered. I think the... <laughs> thank you, Al. You don't we even need to just message me one word, reload, and that's it. <laughs> I'm reloaded. I'm reloading. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you, Al. Love you, brother. Later, brother. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Yarb uh, dog. Yeah. Yarby, we got right, a few so minutes. We, got a, the and we have, Yeah. The Tauntauns screwed us, dude. What do you mean? Well, the Tauntauns come to America, and they say, okay. Akral? You're quitting impact. You're coming with us. Yeah. Right. Right. So now there's this hole in impact and then they, Oh, oh, Mikey. oh, oh, it's, it's the Tauntaun's fault. It's the French. I know. I know. It's the way it goes. Huh? Same thing happened last year. Um, <laughs> impact <laughs> took, took, uh, Dalton. And so then we had to go and take, uh, 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 Harrison. <laughs>
right <laughs> after i think we are had already had chris year you know but yeah. we get blamed for the no because it's level that blames us oh so this is that's why level blames us because we took harrison because of that and then uh infamous took sam silberg right. <laughs> so level blames us. Yeah, oh, it's trickle down economics, I guess. Dude, I guess the blame so. games. Shout yeah, out to the blame man. games. I mean, we got we got a card up our sleeve against Impact. We were talking to their player. So boom. I mean, can we air that? Yeah, you yeah, heard that. Hit talk first. about it. Shout well, I don't know who we're talking to yet, so I gotta figure <laughs> that out. But we're talking to them. <laughs> we're talking to them. Yeah. Yep. For sure, talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> Now that I mean, you're the owner of the team now, Yarber. You make these big shots, these big calls. You know what I'm saying? This is facts. Big Yarb. <laughs> Every once in a while, I have a big shot, but big Yarbin in charge. <laughs> All right, Yarb. We do have some Discord questions from the chat, and uh, okay, they want to know Osborne for this. Blake, if you designed a field layout just for your skill set, what would be a couple of the features in the layout? How would you want to have like? I'd imagine it'd be just maybe like towers and wedges up the middle. What would your ideal layout be? Or maybe, dude, you're the Dorito, the Dorito monster too. No? Snake what beams. We, just snake all snake beams. beams. Yes. All. Add 16 snake beams. Yes. Uh, how many go. snake beams are there? Eight. Eight. We got eight. Okay. But no, you want a whole field of snake beams. Just like you I, could stack I think it's going to be kind of fun. Yeah, it'll be I interesting. Think it's gonna be fun. It's going to link the fields in unique ways. And we talked about this a little bit. Um, I can't remember with who. It's going to bring, I spent some time thinking about it in the last couple of days, actually, because at first I've been like, it's going to be more fun. Why not? What sucks about it is, okay, simple, simple analogy is, and I can't wait to talk to Ryan Brand about this. He's actually in the green room right now waiting for us. So he, he can hear us talking. So we'll up, uh, continue this conversation in a little bit, but Right now you have like, okay, if they don't go past the first can on the snake side, it's a certain gap. And then if they don't go past the bunker after that, it's another gap. So you have all these like codes and and it's very mm -hmm. organized in how you make your shifts and how you watch zones and how you react to certain things. Using the snake beam to connect bunkers like that is going to create a lot of guesswork. And I think it's actually going to take, a, it might take a little bit of the skill out of the game. And it's more like, random you know kind of whack-a-mole so i'm curious and it's going to be really interesting in how they set the fields up i also think it's going to be harder to film most of the media is already upset about it they're like well this is a mm. disaster it's hard for us to capture this you know um from a go sports per perspective i'm curious if it's going to translate to being harder to film as well so i don't know i'm like what bothers me the most is that something like this such a drastic change to the fields isn't voted on by the pro teams that's crazy to me. I think it's crazy. I think it's absolutely crazy. I appreciate that they're constantly trying to try new things and I'm on board with it. We're big fans of what they're doing, what Tom has been doing. I get that. But it seems like in the last few months, there's been a lot of just like all of a sudden these big changes. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. Did we, did we really talk this through with enough people? Well, I think that Tom and they're working with a uh, they're consulting with a, a group of people that maybe that <sighs> has something to do with it and making those little changes. And everyone, we're all just going to say no anyway. No paintball. So it's they like, why ask them? Boom. No, we're it. not all going to say no. We might have, we might say, you know what? Actually, eight might be difficult. Why don't we, if you want to have like bunkers connected like that, maybe remove some of the snake beams and put them in the back, the ones that already exist, and put them in the back in those kind of bunkers. I, I don't know if that's a, the solution. I'm just saying, we have people that have been doing this for 20 plus years at a high level and invest their entire careers into this. They might have some good ideas. Let's consult them. Mm -hmm. You don't well, have to do what everyone advises, but consult them at least, I would think. Yeah, well, I'll tell yeah, you we'll what. See. Tell you what, we're we'll going to be playing with the beams out there. They're probably going to block off lanes, like I said, uh, yeah. like we were talking about. There'll be some like beams they'll put in a in a particular lane or like linking the middle together with all those wedges. I think we'll see a little bit more of that. Probably yeah. the Dorito. As well, I'm sure you'll see some snake beams on the Dorito side, like linking for sure. Yeah, Dorito. No, I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be fun to play. You know, yeah. I, again, it's just like these are drastic changes that I just wish there was a little more of a conversation on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then for yeah. filming it, I think maybe the drone footage looks. The drone footage is great. Yeah. With the, Yes, with the telestrator and all that, great. Yeah, the drone stuff they've been doing, 
looks amazing. Also, uh, shout out to Mike Hinman, the Dub C, WCPPL, with the uh, the drone footage that they were using in those events. It's really cool to, you know, pick a player and have a drone just kind of, you know, not be right on the player, not to give them away or or get shot by all the paintballs that are flying, but having that bird's eye view is really cool for paintball. You can see what they're seeing and what they're going into. Looks really good. Hundred percent. Yep. Yarby, let, let, look. If we were to go back to the question, I'm just gonna answer that question. Uh, okay. If I were to play my favorite field, it would be a couple big bunkers with a lot of small bunkers. Obviously, I'm a big guy. You know, I can play <laughs> a big bunker looking at a bunch of small bunkers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put like, like four it. big bunkers in the middle and a ton yeah. of small bunkers everywhere else. That's what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although I do miss flying down the Doritos, I did enjoy that. Oh yeah, man, you're good at that too. One hey, of the we'll best in the world. It. One of the best in the world, without a doubt. Thank Yarb. And you, I know that when we played together on Dynasty, it was like Smash Bros. You and I yeah. smashing people down the Doritos. And I'll never forget that, dude. That yeah, was that fun. was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Yarb, let's yeah. talk uh taking brute outside of paintball. Yeah, okay. So we're going back to the fishing expo here in Michigan. Uh, we got some frisbee golf lined up. You know, we're we're nice. we're trying to take it elsewhere. Yeah, right now, and nice. I think we have a couple avenues. Um, it, the the future is bright for Brute. At, Love at that. Moment. Please let it's us know amazing. how we can. Like, yeah. how can we all help? How can the paintball community help cool. in in any way? Um, where can they go to support? Like cool. the Instagram and, and video. I know you guys are doing a lot of video stuff as well. So let us yeah. know where we can help. Yeah, I mean, it, look, the 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 subscription for the soap is is a great avenue for for everybody to 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 I don't know buy into a great you, you're you're buying into something good for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You're not just I don't it is yeah, yeah it, it's just great stuff. That it's a great avenue right now. If yep. if uh, if you're looking to support the Heck subscription. Yeah. Show love. And then what tournaments are you going to for like the Frisbee golf? Because I know that stuff's huge. Yeah, there it's over in, uh, I think it's called Tyler. Tyler, Michigan is massive. Is massive. No I already forgot where it was. I've, I've been outside uh, sl slinging logs all day. <laughs> <laughs> He's on another level. Tell where people don't even know where you're living at. Uh, let them know where you're at, where you're reporting from right now. Okay, I'm in two hours north of Detroit, Detroit. Yeah. Detroit. Uh, wow. Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. Grew up yeah. in California and now I live in Michigan. It's cool. You've it's always nice. been, you know, uh, into the natural life, like getting out into nature and, and really enjoying that aspect of life. And there's so much yeah. of that out there, which is amazing. I see all the work that you're doing on your property. And Thank it you. looks like, you know, it's like your own little cut of heaven out there, man. You can yeah, build a sauna if you want to have a paintball field and, you know, um, raise your beautiful family on that cut of land. So it's really cool to see what you've created there, man. Yeah. We just made a woodland Christmas tree. You know, I, I thought March would enjoy that. That's amazing. Check out my Instagram. I need to see it. Where's it at? Yeah, post, post it on, on IG. Did you, you have Instagram? I do. <laughs> let them know that uh, before, didn't know. Them, before we let you go, Yar, uh, what's the Instagram they can follow for brute and then your personal so they can check out your Christmas tree. Okay. Uh, brute is, this is brute. All right. And my personal is B what B Yarber 44. That's a nice tree, sure. bro. There it is. YouTube. That nice. That's incredible. Yeah. That is nice. Nice. Dude, right tree. off the lot, right off the lot. Huh? Boom. Yarb. You Didn't think the team's going to, you think the team's going to be okay? I think so. You yeah. know, it's a, it's unfortunate for Mike. Uh, I like Mikey. He he was a good steward. Um, he was a good pupil. You know, we, we took a risk to bring him in, and he really flourished. Uh, I would like to see him stick around longer. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Obviously. Yeah, it's a bummer. It's definitely a bummer because he, he's come a long way uh, being with this team. And, you know, I, I appreciated his message. I thought it was really classy, well thought out, really, you know, thoughtful. Uh, especially coming from Mike, <laughs> I was like, "Damn, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of words there." Mike is maybe the most words you ever ever said to all of us. Um, but uh, I don't know if if he's gonna find what he thinks he's gonna find elsewhere. I hope he does, though. 
I'm a fan. For sure. I'm a fan and I support him. Sure. He's really fucking good. Um, he's one of the best teammates you'll ever have. Bingo. So impact is impact is really lucky to have a player like that. Um, young kids listening to this, if you want to model your game after somebody or model the type of teammate you are, Mikey's one of the guys to look to for sure. Uh, he shows up, understands that he has a lot to learn and, and he has been that person all the way through. Um, it got to a point on dynasty where he'd be like, so like, how should we play this spot? I'm like, Mikey, you tell me, <laughs> you tell me how to play this spot. Cause I trust that you know it better than I do at this point, you know? Um, but he just had that respect from, from day one and it goes a long way. Um, so I wish him well, obviously, uh, anytime he plays outside of playing us, you know, it's the way it goes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I look forward to seeing his journey, you know, me he, too. He, yeah. he, he's a brother. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, dude. He's one of the best guys ever. And like you said, one of the best teammates. So impact definitely got a, a great player with Mikey coming on over to the camp and yard. And we, we, one ahead. last question before we let you go. Hit me. Cause we, uh, we have Ryan brand waiting. Like we said, Excited to bring him in, but what do you think about Matt Jackson going to X Factor? It's that's great. I mean, Matt's a Matt understands the game very well. He's a good communicator. He's good at putting the game together, you know. And that's where X Factor is is their strength right now. You know, that's how they're trying to dominate the field. And I I think he's a great asset to them. Cody, Cody, they let Cody go right and picked up Matt. Cody is a great player, but I just felt like Cody was struggling with that system. I agree. Well said. Mm -hmm. All right, Yarb. How you enjoy the off season? What do you have? What do you have planned? Uh, I got to finish my mom's house, building my mom's house. Uh, I got a house on the lake for a cousin, doing a bunch of remodels here at my house, you know, and just batting hold down on, the hatch, hold on, getting hold ready on. for Babyville. Dude, you're building a house right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That's crazy. It's like 14 oh degrees god. outside. Yeah. Sick. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, you got to like you got to get you got to build the baby carriage too now. You know what I mean? How cool is a lot that? Of work. Yeah, I know that and I already know it's going to be cherry. This thing's going to be like <laughs> This thing is going to be cherry. How did you know the wood species? I just I know you. I know you, boy. <laughs> Oh man, I can't wait to see it. You got to post that on the Instagram too. We need to see the the whole deal, man. Yarb, uh, thank you love so you much dude. for taking the time to be here, dude. We love you, love man. You boys. All right, bye -bye. Love you, Yarb. See you bye. soon. Bye. Peace. What a guy. I love Yarb. He's the best. Yes. Yarb is the best. What a legend. Yeah. Maybe he'll hang out in the green room and watch the watch the rest of the show. We're gonna bring in the coach of X Factor, one of the best to ever do it. Mr. Ryan Brand, second oh, place hair. Yeah. What up, Ryan? I don't know. You put the hat on. You're scared. You said it was the only way you would do the show. <laughs> That's true. Don't you expose me. <laughs> it's just oh. true. Yo, the hair battle is happening live for the PTG Nation. You said it's the only way he would do the show is if I wore a hat. So. It no, I said it, I would talk about nothing but conspiracy theories. So you would have to wear the tinfoil <laughs> hat all the time. But Yeah, where are they at? I, I had that ready, ready too, bro. Ready. Yeah, got it. Too. <laughs> what kind of tinfoil stuff you got cooking up these days, Ry? Uh, I don't have a good setup. I need to work on one. I think uh, Nick Laval is going to come in town next week for uh, a little bit of project work, <laughs> and uh, and hopefully he'll fill my head with some some good conspiracies, and I'll be ready to roll. You'll be downloaded big time. Oh yeah. How about conspiracies in the paintball world? Do you have any crazy news of or, yeah. or like not yeah, news but conspiracy theories of players making moves? I mean, I've heard some. I mean, some cons I mean, nothing like, I guess I can spill the beans, right? No one's going to get mad it. at yeah. me. I mean, it's not beans. It's I, I, these, these are alleged things, but I beans. mean, I, I've heard they're conspiracy heard theories with, uh, you know, these are conspiracy, but probably happening. I think, uh, Harris Hussein is probably bought into the ML Kings. I think that's, yeah. Uh, Ooh. I think that's happening. Yep. Um, I think that blast camp has, merged with energy and it's going to be mostly blast camp um Yo. as blast, so blast camp camp's going to be in the pro division correct Oof. wow i think that is that wow, is they got uh, in more than likely uh i could say that's i've seen a jersey that says blast camp will lead on it so it's, oh, uh, shit. I think that okay. thing's happening um Whoa. and i this one i don't know if it's true or not but I, it's uh, nico Hyde. i heard this is just a rumor i heard he might have gone to uprising um mm. 
And what? if Nico does, maybe to take on some like uh, ownership stake and build a team on his own. But that's mm-hmm. a rumor. You know, I just yeah. I heard that. That's but so I don't know if yeah, that's true wow. or not, but I, I, I did hear that as a rumor. The other two are um, I, pretty, I would, pretty I would legit. bet some money on it, but that one I've heard is a rumor. You're that, holding back, dude, because I know you know more than I know, and I know more than what you just said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else you got? Let me know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, March. Hey, you're the guest, bro. <laughs> I'm the guest. You're the, no, you're the that, guest. That's most of the good stuff I have. <laughs> that's most of the good stuff I have. So <laughs> what does this mean for the Kings? Um, having him take ownership and and he's gonna you know essentially be building it with the guys over there. I can't wait to see him in a maroon jersey. Oh, it's gonna be <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. Hey, I will say that yeah. dude out there, he gets the job done, man. A lot of the time, you know, say what you want about him. He's he's a good paintball player. He and I, I can that tell for that a long time. I agree. Yeah, he's definitely mindful of more mindful than I guess you'd say in the past of like just going berserk and showing out how he would, you know, he's, Mm -hmm. he's definitely full body energy, always bringing the big energy, but he's really mindful of that these days. And you can see it, you know, in his play style and he's, he's having fun out there. So he's one of those people we talk about products in the game. It's like, what, what a great product to have in the game. What a great person to have in the game. You know, he brings a lot of energy and he's a, he's a topic of discussion every single year. And we want to see him, you know, I hope he does well with the Kings and the ownership goes well. I don't know exactly what that all means, but, you know, wishing nothing but the best for him. Yeah, for sure. I think if Harris, like, settles into a system again here, I think um, he's a good player. You know, I think he's kind of had to move around so much last year and you see the flashes of it. And and then you kind of like maybe he seemed a little bit uncomfortable at times. But I think if he goes to a system and it's maybe even, you know, part his, you know, potentially, then it's like. I think yeah. over a year or two, I think Harris will settle in and, and we might see some good stuff. Yeah, don't like, ask the New York guys. Solid though. guy. Don't ask yeah. the New York guys about. <laughs> uh, they oh they're the biggest fans. Anytime we're in the VIP, they're rooting yeah. for them. Yeah, for everyone the That's just that East Coast, you know. <laughs> that's that East Coast uh, attitude out there, and, and you gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, man. And then the other rumor, what was that? Um, the merger that's a big one i mean that's huge blast yeah, camp that goes stepping down, in. That's, that's huge yeah yeah that would be crazy yo there's gonna be yeah, such an out sh- there's gonna be an uproar on that <laughs> it's gonna go crazy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm curious yeah i'm curious to see what players they they take from from blast camp and what players stay from nrg i mean I, i've heard it might be mostly blast camp and then really? Alan is kid. Alan yeah, and his kid. Got uh, it. Yeah. But I don't know what happens to all those energy guys because there's some good players on that team. So yeah, it is, um, you know, I don't know. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, I know that there's camps in the bottom 10 portion of the league that would be very happy to pick up any of those players. And even uh, camps in the top 10 of the league, you know, there's there's a lot of opportunity um, in cultivating talent from those teams, especially if you've got, you know, some really good talent that just needs to be, you know, rounded out a little bit in a certain aspect. So we'll see kind of what the shakeup does as we move into December. I'm sure more of that will start to break soon. Did you hear anything about Malloy and Sergey leaving the Russian Legion? I heard them maybe going to impact, but I don't know how true or not true that is, but I've heard that as a rumor. I've yeah. heard Malloy going to impact for, I feel like the last 10 I years. Know. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. And that's like, it's like, I, I almost, that's like, I can believe Malloy just because I know it's gotten particularly close quite a few times. But yeah. They had a I Jersey made know. for him that Matt Jackson exactly, actually but... ended up wearing when he went to impact. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. So I don't know. It's like one of those, like, I know it's almost happened enough, but I've also known it's almost happened and not happened. That it's hard for me to, yeah, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, but I don't, you know, and honestly, I think my biggest, I mean, those are two great players. It'd be great for impact, but I'm also like, what happens to the Russians? Like, you know, I just, well, I heard, know, I heard Sergey's like throwing around huge numbers at American players right now. Hmm. Uh, well, main I, Sergey, not, that. not Sergey, the player. Yeah. Yeah. Owner, yeah. Sergei. yeah. Hmm. And, yeah. Interesting. Well, if Super. I'm going to, yeah, I, I, you might be able to. One of you two is probably can confirm that because if I'm throwing a huge money at somebody, it's probably the two of these guys on the screen. So um, it sounds <laughs> Dude, like he nobody, might be throwing around huge money. Nobody calls me, bro. I think people people know. Yeah. 
<laughs> that is so. My you know, phone is silent. You're the owner, dude. You're the owner of Dynasty. What are you doing? You know? Yeah, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Here and they're throwing some big numbers around to some some uh, high profile American players. It'd be interesting. Like, could you imagine? Oh, they are. Maybe. I, could you imagine? I'm spitballing this. I promise. This is not something I've heard. But like, a J Rab return to Russian Legion, I think that'd be sick. Damn. I think something like that would that'd be, be cool. super cool. You know? Yeah. Um, that'd be great. That'd be amazing. Um, yeah. I don't know though. Maybe that. Maybe that. Not does. great that I wanted to happen to Diesel. Just great because J Rab was fantastic on that. Yeah. Game. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. No. 100%. Nostalgic. You know, nostalgic, like yeah. Those timeless uh, videos of him running around in the jersey. Yeah, those are all time. <clears throat> um, that could also kind of show that, yeah, maybe Malloy and Sergey are leaving if that's happening. You know, if, if they are throwing money around to American players. Yeah, but I could see it the other way. It's like, if why wouldn't they just throw it around to those two players? You know, to keep them. I know like the results aren't really there, but it's like if you have the money to spend, like. I'm still spending it on Malloy over, you know, a majority of the people in the league. So yeah, like, but maybe it's but not maybe about Malloy's just over it. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's not about money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's you know, yeah, different different things that happens for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, right. Exciting, exciting stuff. stuff though. Yeah, we're gonna have to have him on the show a lot more because he brings he brings the fire. You got the fire info. Oh, dude, Coach <laughs> Ryan Brand is the man. Yeah, he's the man. We got it. Yeah, we need to have like. I'm just here for PTG, dude. I'll spill the beans, you know. It's like I might get myself in a little trouble, but you know, <laughs> who well, cares, uh, dude? What kind of trouble can we actually yeah. get in, you know? Ryan and I, I gotta say, man, uh, thank you so much for being a part of the PTG world. Like you're, you're such a amazing member of Paintball as a whole, but especially in like the PTG Discord, you're always in there sounding off. We have tons of people in there, and actually. Um, we got to get Yarber in there too. I was asking, where's Yarber? Why is he not in here? Uh, but just got to say thank you. And I know the community appreciates it for everything that you do in there as well. Yeah, I feel bad. I need to figure out how to turn on my notifications for Discord. I don't have mine. So like sometimes people will like tag me like in a message and I like see it like three days later. I'm like, well, it's awkward to respond now because they think I'm just ignoring them. But, hey, it's yeah. better late than yeah. never. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. It's true. Yeah. And it's, it's been a really fun project, uh, having the podcast and then also having the chat room. Cause it's like PB nation is what it makes me feel like we've got all these different threads and sub threads and everyone's just having fun in there. Um, obviously, you know, talking about the, the games, the gear, the shows, everything in paintball. So it's been cool to share that with people like yourself and, and everybody that's involved. Ryan, I want to talk to you about X factor. And obviously you guys made a huge move to pick up Matt Jackson. We were talking about Blake or talking with Blake about that move uh, before we brought you in. I think it's a fantastic move. I think Matt is a, a massive upgrade. Um, he's a dynamite player. He's going to fit in great with TJ as well. Assuming you guys are keeping TJ. I'm sure you guys are. Um, yeah. That really solidifies your guys' uh, uh, core that you can have like a, you know, in my opinion, you guys have been one of the best teams at throwing a lot of things at other teams. You have a lot of weapons, a lot of a lot of places that you can attack from. So it's hard to play against. Anytime we practice you guys, it's like you have to watch out for everything. You know, you guys are constantly throwing stuff at us. But it's that and, and TJ brought a little bit more of a steady pace, so he would kind of be the rock. But now you have two of those. So having two of those with a lot of weapons is really a winning formula. So is there any other kind of moves? You know, I think we've heard that, well, this was Vince. Shout out to Vince from Let's Talk Paintball. He said X Factor was making a, a major shakeup. Do you guys plan on releasing any players or picking anyone else up? Obviously, if you can't talk about it, that's okay. But if there's anything you can talk about, yeah. what can you share? Um, I would say that, like, the the big moves you know were made right the the okay. down one up one of like the kind of the the blockbuster moves have been made you know um we're probably going to go into you know we're reevaluating we're evaluating things um we're not looking to really do anything crazy you know we might we're going to look at a couple guys you might look at some old faces might look at um some some younger faces too and just kind of see where we might want to um supplement here and there but at the end of the day, like I'm, we're really happy with our team. You know, we're, yeah, we're we don't want to change too much. I mean, we're happy with our squad. 
Um, you know, as, as far as Cody goes, like it just, uh, Cody's a, a great paintball player and it just wasn't um, a great fit, you know, for him, you know, during the year. Right. And so for me, it's like, um, it just, that wasn't really panning out that well. And, and I think for him too, it was like, he was a little bit uncomfortable within the system. And I think it just wasn't a great system fit. And sometimes it's just that it is what it is. And someone like Cody with the amount of talent he has, it's, it's one of those, like, do we keep trying to force square peg in a round hole or, or do we kind of make a move to, to make the culture and everything else, you know, flow a bit better? hundred percent. And then, and yep. for, for Matt, like for fuzzy, like I'll, I'll, uh, like, I, I, like, I honestly, like I, I shit the bed a couple of years ago because when we picked up TJ, we were going to take fuzzy as well. Um, but, and, and John, but what happened was we had just gone to back to back finals and it was one of those, like, do we want to do that big of a shakeup? You know, it's like when it's, you know, when it's not broken, do you fix it? And we kind of just said, you know what, let's not do it all right here. We kind of got cold feet in the situation of like bringing in three additional players at once um, as the team was flowing. Right. You know, we went to a, you know, um, it was like we went to final Chicago, went to final and world cup. And then we're about to, we're considering making this kind of like big shakeup in the team and the whole culture of the team. Um, so, you know, we wound up not doing it. TJ came on um, and, and Fuzzy went to the uh, to Impact. John went to Ironman. And from there, it's like ever since then, it's kind of like, oh, man, like, you know, was that the right decision or not? So ever since then, it's been a little bit of, a, you know, you know, TJ and Fuzzy, they played together for, for you know, years and years and mm-hmm. years. You know, they played mm-hmm. Challengers Division together, you know. So it's one of those things that um, eventually we – hope that it would come together and happen and and it just it, it did and we weren't gonna i wasn't gonna screw it up twice uh so it's like that's one of those things that when the opportunity was there like we had to, to jump at it and we're really grateful that um he is um you know ready and willing and, and wanted to come and join us this time nice yeah, as one of the best coaches in the world you talked about culture how do you cultivate a winning culture in a team and and what are the things that you have to do to make sure that that's on track to have success during a season? Um, I think that is the, the hardest part, you know, of, of really getting this group of individuals together and on the same page and, and figuring out what that culture is. And it really comes down to the personalities, you know, like some, some cultures won't work for some teams and, and, and some you know groups and it's one of those like cohesion and you it really i think the foundation a little bit is is on trust um and what that team is in, in buy-in you know trust and buy-in of what that culture is and do you um you know is it about having a good time is it about winning you know obviously winning's paramount for everyone that's at the top but also it's like, how can you find a way to balance the two and make sure people are enjoying being around each other and having a good time and, and kind of going through the system correctly and, and believing in ownership, management, coaching, all these things to really get that firm culture in there yeah. to where if you do lose a piece, um, cause like you're going to lose players, right? Every, we all know this, like you're going to gain players, you're going to lose players, but if you want to keep your organization on top, you really need to set what that culture is. Um, and if and and or you'll kind of fall apart at the seams when it happens you know i think like you know dynasty i think in my opinion right now has the strongest culture you know they just and i I think that's not you know um i don't think there's too many people that would argue with it you know it's like that's a, a team of people that are um they're have they found a way to have a really good time together they enjoy being around each other right mm-hmm. there's a team of guys that um, are compensated more at some level, but almost every player on that team can and turns down offers to make more money somewhere else. So they've all decided and chosen to be there. That's powerful, right? And they're and they buy into it, you know. And you know, skinny as a coach, they have a lot of guys. It's very difficult to have eleven good paintball players on a team, and then to have the trust and the coach and the core of that team to it's not always the same five or six guys. And you look at a lot of teams when it comes down to it, 
it's usually like on Sunday, you know, who's going to kind of play more often than not. You know, you could even say with our team as a recent or, you know, he, uh, y'all sometimes switch it up, but it's, you know, it's usually the same guys, but on dynasty, they, they allow for somebody to step up, you know, be it, was it Urena, right? Right now it was Arturo Harrison's had big events, you know, everyone's kind of, float in and out of there and the culture is just really interesting to me it's something for i think all teams to strive for you know i ran into harrison it was maybe the first day of the tournament and i was like how is it going and then you know i don't you know harrison has his, his his stupid annoying voice he always does and he just looked at me he goes he goes i know play this of it and i was just <laughs> like and i was like damn i was like that sucks and he just looks at me he goes it's okay i play next one and and that was it you know it's like he's He's bought I into love that the though. Coach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's bought into that. Yeah. And and also I, I love to hear him say, I'll play the next one because that shows the mm. mentality as well. Like, you know, and, and that you have to earn it. You know, you have to earn it. Alex mm. was on the show earlier tonight speaking to the same exact thing, you know, that you have to earn it on this team and you have to earn it every single time. Just because you earned it last event doesn't mean you earned it this event, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um and and it is uh it's an interesting dynamic for sure because it's tough but it's competitive and as long as there's no bad attitudes around it if everybody's bought into it i think it's one of the best you know cultures you could have that's how it is with divisional teams that i coach you know and and i asked them from the beginning i'm like hey what kind of program do we have going on here is everybody kind of paying and so i gotta try to get everybody play time or are we just trying to win okay if we're just trying to win then it's all nobody's play time's guaranteed it's going to develop throughout practices and throughout matches throughout the tournament you know mm-hmm. and given the layout given the teams that we play at the last uh wcppl actually uh i had a player that in all of the practices he was one of the best players for our team first match of the event he gets us a, a awful penalty that was just a lack of discipline right something that we discuss over and over that I just have no tolerance for. So I sat him, put him in again for a point later, had a bad point. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not, I I can't trust you right now to put you back in. We get to the finals <laughs> and given the team we were playing, I was like, I need your skill set for this, for this match. And I started him that match and he played almost every point in that match, you know, and we win the tournament. And he was like, I couldn't believe that you played me. And I'm like, well, I needed what you had to offer. And it was like, you know, I felt like you got, those things out of the way and it was the time to play you, you know? And so it's like part of just kind, kind of buying in and being ready. If he was a player that had a bad attitude because I sat him and didn't buy into what we were doing, I can't have the confidence to put him in and in a moment like that. Right. But everybody on that team is fully bought in. They trust it. So when they get sat, they're like, okay, it's for a re it's for, it's for the right reason. It's not, I'm not being, you know, treated, you know, unfairly, it's because I did something wrong. We try to get better from it, but let's be there for our teammates and be ready to play if my name gets called again. And his name got called again, and he played excellent and helped us win the final match. You know, um, that's a really important dynamic to have on a team, and you don't see it in many organizations. You see players often, if they're not playing, they're really bitter about it. They're sour. They're uh, and you know, there's a fine line. Like there's. You see it in other professional sports, like when a coach will sit there, star player, and you're like, that ain't the move, dude. Like you're trying to prove a point and it's just not the, the right point, in, in my opinion, at least. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it, there's very few people that can get away with being upset with being benched, in my opinion. It's a handful of people. Um, outside of that, it's like, you if you're, not, if you're not having your best day, you know, it, let somebody else step up. Be happy for your teammates to step up. Be happy for that. Embrace that. Motivate them. You know, boost them. You know, that's a very important dynamic. And and the teams that I coach, it's like something I preach from the very beginning. You know, I'm like, look, it's I have no uh, predetermined anything. As the event flows, I'm going to be putting things together that I believe in. When it's all said and done, we could go back and say if I was right or wrong, right? But during the moment, I just need everybody to buy in. I can't guarantee that I'm going to be right. But I believe in it, so buy in. And then afterwards, if if I was wrong, then we could address that. I'm totally cool with that, you know. And and you know, we I've been there before as well, where we look back. And I'm like, yeah, I, I was wrong in making this decision, you know. And Ryan, I'm sure you've been there as well. Tyler, you've coached a few teams. I'm sure you've been there as well. Mm-hmm. It's a hard position as a coach because 
you know, really the players, the players really dictate a lot of like how good of a job you do as a coach. It's a really tough spot to be in. You know, you, you can make some nuanced decisions that a lot of people won't even ever recognize or understand unless they really understand the game. But players can also save you from making a bad decision. <laughs> I've had that happen many times where I'm like, oh, <laughs> that play was wrong. And all of a sudden a, a player like goes off and makes a, you know, a, a fantastic play and shoots a couple of people. And I'm like, okay, whew, saved us. You know, I was like, but it, there was a big hole in that game plan that I didn't catch, you know. Um, anyway, that was a little bit of a, a, yeah. of a rant there, but. Just I've, been, I've been saved a lot. Yeah. I've been saved a lot by, by players uh, <laughs> for my errors and picked up by, but uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's really the playing time thing is something that teams just have to figure it out. And I feel like, you know, our team, we're still, you know, that's a constant battle I'm working out. Right. And it's, it's really difficult because like every player at the top level, they want to be on the field. Right. And they all believe they should be on the field. And I want that. Right. They, they all, everyone's a killer, you know, like it, it just is that situation the, the where it becomes an issue is sometimes where players. Um, and honestly, I, part of me feels like it's subconscious that they, they don't realize that, that do you want to be on the field because you honest hundred percent believe that that's the best thing for the team, or do you want to be on the field because you want to be on the field and maybe, maybe not. That's what's best right now. The lights out. And I've kind of gotten to a point that I've like, I'm honestly like I've lost my tolerance uh, or even my empathy uh, for the, that situation of players that are, are just, they're more concerned about playing and being on the field than winning. And mm -hmm. I think for a long time, I had a lot of empathy for that because when I played pro, I was one of those guys. I was one of the extra guys that didn't get to play all the time. Right. And I know what it feels like and it fucking sucks. And I also know that I didn't handle it the best all the time either. So when someone's I've coached is struggling with it and not handling it, I have a lot of empathy or I've had a lot of empathy towards that. But I've kind of gotten to the back the point that that is so bad for the team culture that it just can't happen. And I can't yeah. continue to enable it at any capacity. It's mm. just got to go. You know, and so people that we've moved on from, you know, in, in the past, you know, 12 months, um, it, it's really kind of been a little bit of struggling with playing time and and not being super excited about it and not knowing the best way to deal with it. And I, I understand it's it's tough. It's difficult. And there's a lot of other players on my team. If I tell Billy, like, hey, dude, like, you're not going to play. I don't know how he's going to react to it or to meter or to to Algerian and stuff, it's a difficult thing. But at the end of the day, the culture has to be built around supporting your teammates and trusting, right? And having trust that they're going to go out there and handle it. And if me as a coach, if I fuck it up, let me fuck it up, you know? And, and, and sometimes with players, I see something where like right now, if we go into a point and it's overtime and I don't put Billy in and he was playing good, I'm probably gonna have three or four guys coming to me like, why the hell did you do that? You know, like, what were you doing? Like, and I'm not because I'm not beyond making mistakes. But that's if you want to be that guy that's that's always playing overtime or always there on Sunday or getting all those reps, it has to be like, make it known, right? Make it so clear. If you're upset about playing time, you need to work to a level to make it so clear that it is just blatant common sense that you should be out there, you know? And, and that's, and we've had these things happen where I, I, like a, a player has gotten hurt and then there's like three guys, like he's got to go. Like, can we get him out there? Can we do that? Like, that's the guy that, sh it, like you said, can maybe be a little upset if he's not getting a fair shake from his coach. You got to earn that trust, right? You got to earn it. Right. Absolutely. And like, and, and on, like, maybe this is like, in, in Chicago, Marcelo, like we were sharing a pit and I know you were a little upset that Ryan wasn't out there and your voice. Yeah, absolutely. That's because Ryan has earned it, 100%. right? He's earned it. And skinny knows what the fuck he's doing. So it has nothing to do with that. He's proven it. And, but Ryan has earned it. And if you're a guy that's mad about playing time, like go and, and fucking prove it. You know what I mean? Oh, and also if you're about it, prove it. 
sorry to interject, but if you're a guy that's mad about playing time, go back and watch that match. It was uh, actually against Heat in Chicago where Ryan didn't play. If you see in the pit ever at any point, Ryan never bitched or complained once. I will. Like, we're talking about Ryan Greenspan. One of the best to ever do it. I mean, doesn't need an introduction. Everybody knows who he is. Didn't complain and was just trying to boost his teammates the whole time. In that, in that moment, right? Like, incredible. I thought he should have been on the field. He's one of those players where it's Sunday paintball. Like, let's find a... Let's find a place for him, you know. <laughs> I don't care where we put him. Put him. I don't care where we put him. Get him on the field, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just put him out there. Um, but it's uh, you know, Skinny does make those tough choices. He really does. And that is uh again, as as a coach, you're never gonna be hundred percent, period. Um it's I think it's impossible as a player, you're never gonna be hundred percent in sports, you're never gonna be hundred percent, right? Um and, you know, that was one of those things where if he was playing, maybe we win that match. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Maybe we lose worse. You know, I, I actually don't know. Um, I know it's easy to complain when you aren't winning and you say, this is what we should have done. It's a lot easier to do that, obviously. So um, from that standpoint, I'm like, yeah, we, we should have Ryan in. But he's one of the few players, one of the very few players that have earned that right through decades of work. You know, it's not like just a season of, uh, of, of work or two seasons of playing really well. It's, it's like decades. four or five decades. It's, it's like four or five decades. <laughs> it's, like it's, it's like four or five decades. <laughs> I know. I know. And also I felt bad too. Cause I was like, look, this might be his last <laughs> few tournaments. You know, he's like so old, you know, <laughs> I God, I hope so. God, oh, I hope so. Yeah, he's, right, dude. I, I think he said he's going another 10. <laughs> oh, at freak. least. At least. He's and freak. and I watch him so, like run the snake. I'm like, that dude is looks like he's 28 years old. So he's yeah. a vampire, dude. Yeah. yeah. Youthful. And being a coach in any pro sport is one of the most difficult things ever. Like hats off to all the pro coaches and divisional coaches. Just being a coach in general is not an easy task at all. 100%. A lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Can't imagine. I mean, in, in the NFL and in other sports, they're calling for your head mid season. If things aren't going well, you know, you're, you're out of there next man up. Yeah. It's pretty wild. You know, it's like, hold on, this isn't the coach. Did you see the player drop four of those passes? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like that was a touchdown. It should have been a touchdown. The play call was great. <laughs> you know, it's a interesting thing. Stuff, you know, yeah, I've I've uh, I've gotten things way right and the team hasn't performed and I've gotten things way wrong and the team has performed. You know, it goes, you know, it's at the end of the day it, it is very much on the players. I yeah. think the coaches, you know, your job is to obviously give your team as much of an advantage as possible, right? So if you can give them that uh, the tiniest if, you know, for me like my win loss really comes down to all right, we shot 10 people off the break and they shot five and it's like, that's a pretty big win for me. And if the other way around, it's like, cause I'm trying to get my guys out alive and I'm trying to get their lanes in the right place to, yeah. to shoot mm -hmm. those guys, you know, but other than that, like the game is very much determined on the players. Um, but the coach needs to figure out how to, it's really back in that culture to, to, to lead it, to get that belief, to have the trust and all those types of things. Like that's where, you know, the magic is. And if, and if you've lost that, then, then things need to be addressed, you know, and, and then maybe the coach, you know, it's like, I'm not perfect. You know, it's like, it's one of those things that if, if, you know, I can, I can lose my job too, just like any player can, but it's, um, it's one of those things that it's like, it's really about just, yeah, we all know this, right. Just going in the same direction, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's the wrong direction, if you're all going in that direction, that's better than five dudes going in different directions mm -hmm. when it comes to paintball. Yeah. And we're going to see, uh, the snake beams we want to pick your brain on that because they're they're adding all these uh snake beams to the field so what do you think that's going to look like for the 2024 season and, and the types of layouts we're going to see it's it's really interesting to me i i you know change is always like i would say selfishly it's like i i do like because i've been coaching for so long sometimes like a new challenge right like a new challenge do i think it's what's best for the sport like that's to be seen, absolutely. Um, my biggest concern is um, with eight beams, like that's a lot of beams. How many beams were there before? Six already, I think. Six or right? something, yeah. So we're, we're, we're doubling it plus them. And so is that right, there's going to be a lot more. Yeah. 
I don't know. I think it was, yeah, maybe only yeah. six. I don't think there was that many. So eight's, mm-hmm. eight's crazy to add. So in my opinion, there's just the one thing we all can and probably agree on is that there's going to be more crawling going on. Like that's the <laughs> one thing I can say hands down. Like, you know, no matter what you're going to do, there's going to be the need for more crawl. So when I'm looking at, um, and then pros, like there's not so much of this, but like as it goes down to divisionals, like sometimes you got some people in your roster that just aren't the best crawlers. And from, from there, it's, it's just one of these situations that like where are those guys going to go with 50% of the bunkers on the field, you have to crawl into or around or any of this type of stuff. And I think that is problematic for the sport and the economy of the sport. This is hilarious, yeah, dude. I have not yeah. seen it through this lens yet. I've not really thought about it in that way. You know, um, I come from a, a background of doing structural <laughs> inspections and, and, you know, crawling under houses yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So I'm ready for the crawl game. But um, I'd never really thought about it like that. But you're right. There's going to be a tremendous amount of crawling going on. I mean, we've been looking at it from like a roster perspective of like, hey, who do we want to have in our back center? Because that person, the second, like, let's just assume there's probably going to be more beams on the snake side. I know they might go everywhere, but there's probably more over there. So the second your snake guy gets killed, the your back center guy, and especially the way these layouts have been, have been kind of tr- traditionally floating three snake way. That guy's going to be crawling. So oh, yeah. your back center guy kind of needs to be another front guy or – you know tyler who's you know the bug guy dude you know, we like never like doing all that stuff. we like never put three snakes side no matter what we're like screw the snake <laughs> well if you want to lose the tournaments everyone else put three snake ones so that's that's the one one thing that was happening but and also ryan <laughs> um, i would like to be addressed as the termite overlord uh if you could please address yes, that does make sense that does oh make sense. the termite or- <laughs> overlord <laughs> it's the master <laughs> they're eradicated forever no i i never no i would i would just be down there letting them know you got dry rot you got leaks you got termites you know what i'm saying i uh i never I never harmed the little guys. I would just let the the people know what's going on. He wasn't the exterminator. And then go yeah. in there and harm them. I heard you had to move out of California because the termites were so pissed. They were gonna dude. Take they ate down. my house. I don't, I'm home. I'm actually I've it. lost everything to termites. They they <laughs> took over. <laughs> it was crazy. Absolutely oh, no. crazy. Payback is a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All these years, uh, this out to the realtors. The termites, yeah, dude. There's, that's big business. If you're looking to uh, get into a good industry, do structural inspections and uh, work with the real estate agents. It's a really good gig. It's a fun one. Realtors, maybe not so. Like it's a great, wild, crazy world in the realtor world. But definitely, wild. never a dull moment crawling underneath houses uh, with like zombie rats and fleas and all the spiders and everything. It was insane. Hundred <laughs> percent. Give it a go. Let's see, uh, Ryan, I'm going to jump into the Discord for for a, a question here from Patty Rice. He goes, Ryan, love the pickup of Fuzzy for the squad. As a great communicator and an underrated attacker, do you see Matt instantly jumping in and playing a lot of meaningful time with the squad? And is X Factor making any more moves? Obviously, we already addressed that part. Uh, yeah, we we picked up Matt with the intention of of him coming in immediately and and um to to fill in immediately like i i I anticipate him playing a major role on the team and i think we've um that's just i mean it's gonna be on him right at some point it's on all of us to to make sure it fits in but the intention is for him to come in and play a major major component awesome and and everything's earned like we talked about you know what i'm saying like no matter what on all these top tier teams if you want to be out there go make plays go and you know be be a, a conductor of the overall field view help help the team and you'll see that field play all right we got the the video shout out to the video dropping crazy videos always in the media threads on the uh discord ryan what has coaching done to alter the game for you and at this point do you get more enjoyment from coaching or playing still okay um I, it's a tough one, you know, it's like, uh, I, I'm probably gone through this in earlier episodes, so I won't go too deep, but you know, like when I got into coaching, um, 
you know, I really enjoyed it. Right. And I think it's, but I was kind of in this like mental block of like away from playing at the time, you know, it's like, I, I struggled through my, my professional career a little bit with what I was talking about playing time. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to coach. And it was nice to be rather than a guy that was getting a few points a match, you know, in most cases to being involved in every little step of the way. And then it, and it did kind of click with kind of the way my brain works and mindset. So I really enjoyed coaching. Um, and, and getting good at it and better and really all the nuances of it. Um, but I was starting to feel a little bit of burn and a little bit of just, you know, I'm watching paintball so much. And the thing I grew up wanting to do as a kid and all this stuff. And, and luckily like 10 men came back into my life. And I think that really just kind of reinvigorated my love for um, playing and, and not having to really kind of lie to myself so much anymore of like, Oh, I don't like to play. I coach like, I love to play. It's much more fun. I would much rather shoot someone with a paintball than watch someone shoot a paintball. It's just, it's hands down. Yeah. Um, luckily I get to do, you know, a fair amount of both now. Um, and it's, I mean, that's the simple and, and they, they supplement each other. I think I'm a much you know better player now because of coaching, you know, me and Dave Baines were playing sure. the last 10 men together with cap. And we were talking about like, hey, we're out here, me and him were the ones shooting everybody. And, and it's kind of like, he's like, I think we're better because we coach. And I was like, yeah, like we watch, so much paintball that it, it makes you better like you, mm-hmm. you it just you, you approach and think about the game in a, in a different light i mm-hmm. certainly think coaching has helped uh, my game evolve i i think coaching and in this podcast honestly we talk about all the time the conversations we have on a, it's every single week we are sitting here talking about paintball talking about the game talking with the brightest minds in the game um and coaching the teams that i have over the last couple seasons has i think opened my eyes to a lot about really just like the the uh overall understanding of of the game of paintball you know and all the things that could go right and wrong and it helps you especially in the role that i play you know and and tyler same with you the role that you play is kind of a quarterback on the field where you're in a spot where you are responsible for other players uh it helps you see that all so much more clearly you know absolutely yeah and we're actually going to be going out to texas pretty soon to come and see you we're going to be out at uh x factor paintball park for the oh, paintball yeah, that's right. line. let's go yeah. Are you gonna be out there ryan uh, i will um more than likely like uh, at least stop in and support anthony like um you know at some in some capacity so it's yeah just definitely um i as long as like i gotta look at the scheduling a little bit like there's a chance my wife might be out of town which would, would but i think she might get back like on that friday and then uh i'll swing out in the morning if you have a chance to come out one of the days, uh, it would be awesome because it's also where I will be scouting for the Team USA uh, kids. So I'll be looking to see who we're going to invite to the closed tryout. So it's a pretty big weekend for a lot of people there. Um, and I would love to have your awesome. opinion. I'd love to have your your assistance out there if you're if you're available. No pressure. Absolutely. I, if, I would love if to you, be there. Um, so if you don't make it, you don't make love work, the kids. I will. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. I just, I don't, I don't support the kids. <laughs> don't support the kids. Didn't just hook up one of the best deals ever for Colton Dahl. That kid yeah. is ecstatic about it too, by the way. That's been amazing, man. You guys are, are phenomenal yeah. for doing that. I listen, I know we don't have a lot of time here. I listened to Archie's episode oh, we, and yeah. I was a little like, I was a little, um, uh, I, I didn't love his response just so much or like his going into it as deeply. Cause and I guess it's his whole thing is kind of my baby. And, and he does, did acknowledge that. But like, for me, like that is something I really want to do and continue to do and grow and expand upon. Um, I just think that um, sponsoring some of these divisional standouts um, is it, huge um, for them uh, to acknowledge them, to, for, to show display to other divisional players that can climb up. Um, to maybe some of these kids that are really wanting to do this and their parents aren't like really that necessarily supportive of it. And they can say, Hey, look at this, look at this 16 year old kid. Like he's got this sponsorship. He's getting this, he's getting that. Um, I want to, I want to go further with it. So we're really just dipping our toes into it with Colton. Like there, I do have, and honestly, I haven't like told him everything that I have uh, in my brain yet of wanting to do next season, but I I really do kind of want to ramp it up there. And then awesome. once that that's kind of firmly um, planted in the ground, I think we're going to probably expand into some other divisional players because it, it's kind of, uh, you know, I, I've done, um, you know, the sport's been good to me and it's treated me well. And I do kind of want to give back a little bit. And I think that's an area 
that I look at myself as a divisional player that loved nothing but paintball and, um, you know, what that would have meant, meant to me at the time. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, um, I want to, I want to dive deeper into that and, and, you know, maybe some other companies will follow along and, and if they don't like, you know, great. Cause that's just more like, we'll be the company <laughs> that supports the, the kids, you know, it's, it's whatever, yeah. but that, that is, that's important to me. And I kind of got the idea. It was funny. I was watching a, uh, uh, a Sean White documentary, I think on HBO. And, and he was kind of just going into his career and that, that was the turning moment for him, um, boarding sponsorship when he was like 12, 13 years old. And uh, I think it was Burton and it might've been for snowboarding too. And, but it was just like, it was like, holy, that was his holy shit moment of like, I'm this mm -hmm. kid and I'm being given all this stuff and all this stuff. And I can really do this and take it somewhere. So that's kind of where the seed first planted in my head. And, you know, I, I reached out to you, Marcelo, cause I know you are, um, you know, one of, if not, you know, I would just say you, to me, you're probably the, the biggest um, knowledge base on, on these kids and, and, who they are and who's been working hard and who were, who's worthy. Um, and you gave me, honestly, I, I really appreciate all the feedback you gave me because you could have just thrown me a name, but you gave me a, you know, 2000 words on 10 different players of like, this is um, who this person is and, and why, you know, I think you should take a look at them. So thank you for that. And, um, and hopefully we'll um, continue to, you know, press this forward and, and, you know, do something new and cool in this sport. 100% and, man. Yeah. That's it, tremendous. It is. It's a, it's a really cool thing for, for kids. You know, I, I feel like, you know, when we were kids, Tyler, I like one of the earliest things I could think of is uh virtue. Um, mm -hmm. when I was 16 and just, yeah. I had just turned pro, but I was still a kid. Right. And times were different back then. It was easier to turn pro as a kid. Cause you had 15 man rosters, you played these long matches. So teams were more likely to take risks on young players. Um, but virtue was my first sponsor. And I remember they gave me like, uh, a bunch of stickers and uh the virtue board and then i had a deal where if i was in any magazine uh with their sticker on the loader then i would get yep. like 50 bucks and if it was like a, a full page thing it was like 150 bucks i forget the the numbers right but to me it was like the coolest thing to this day i have the poster that they made you know and put up at their booth of me mm -hmm. you know and it was like to me it was it it felt like larger than life. You know, I felt so yeah. validated and it was just such an incredible thing for me to have. And it inspired me. It made me want to work harder. It motivated mm -hmm. me. So, you know, to see something like that, uh, kind of coming back around is phenomenal and I'm here for it. You know, there's so many kids that are really deserving of it right now in the sport. We have a great, great pool of youth players that are working their butts off, doing the right things. They're on the right path and they have a lot of talent, a lot of talent and a lot of work ethic. And they really could be something in this sport. They're going to be something in this sport. You know, it's a matter of time. So it's exciting, man. I, I really like what you guys are doing with that. Yeah. Wherever Colton's at, he's super excited. Cause he just heard that, uh, that, that it's going to be way bigger than he imagined too. So he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dial me in baby. Yeah. I yeah, that, it, man. that is amazing. And I know you guys are also doing the, uh, the anodizing. Um, that's probably going to start ramping up pretty soon. And it's the only uh, place I get my guns anod now. Yep. It's pretty amazing. You guys are doing I mean, that. I, I, just, I think I'm going to try to figure out, I can't have you winning every tournament. So I'm gonna be like, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> here, my gun up. Figure it out. Sabotage. I, Sabotage. No, I was saying, Archie, don't let Ryan touch this one. Yeah. <laughs> don't let better. Ryan touch this one. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, yeah. Chad Yaya Boucher had one done and it looked amazing. Really good yeah. work that you guys are doing over there. Yeah. I got another one for Chad. I need to get on next week. He keeps hitting me up. So <laughs> need, uh, sorry. Sorry for the delay, Chad. Um, but it's been busy. It's been a busy process. Well, you guys are tight. You guys are, uh, you know, always talking shit to each other and having fun. And, you know, he's, he's the <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah, he is. That's my boy. Shout out to Yaya one time. Go shop that Leopard King. He's got some uh, some crazy barrels, too, that he's been dropping. So check those out on his site there. And I think we got some questions in the Discord. And, and uh, we'll kind of round it out with some of the, qu the questions in here. Shout out to everybody sounding off in the chat. The PTG world has been going bonkers lately. Let's see. Um, I don't know. March, do you see any that you want to tackle? I got a good one. Yeah. Rounder. Okay. Uh, Ryan, what's the plan for X Factor in the offseason? Obviously, making some moves. Um, what are you guys looking at doing in the offseason? You guys going to get together, do some snowboarding, some golf? What do you got going on? 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll probably here in um, a, a, what we do. We have a practice scheduled in a couple of weeks, so we're it won't be mandatory. It won't be everybody, but um, we're gonna kind of just give a couple of looks to, to some people, um, mm -hmm. just kind of see how we're gonna kind of round things out. And then in January, we always like to get together and do like a full mandatory team practice. Um, just get one in, get everyone um, just a little bit ahead of the curve. And on that practice, we typically like to um, really go do something like do a half day one day um, and just do a team bonding, you know, thing. And so it's um, that's kind of where it is. It's really important. And I think like last year, it's funny, like we were this is how I knew the offseason was so crazy and delayed last year is that we were. Uh, at this giant pickleball facility when the diesel stuff was going down. And so like, cause meters close with, with, with Mark and I'm like, we're looking at it, it's like, Hey, this is happening. And Alex Martinez was like, there's no way that <laughs> Mouse and Jay are going and like, I'm like, this is happening right now. And I'm like hitting the pickleball. Like, no, this is happening. He's like, no. And then all of a sudden it just started popping off. So it's like, uh, that was how late in the off season, those moves, we were already having a mandatory yeah. team practice. And yeah. That was that, mid January. That was, that was late. That was too late. Yeah. It was too late. Yeah. I, I was uh, yeah. in Miami uh, with Ryan for a clinic. It was like, yeah, mid January. Mm -hmm. And we hear about Dalton leaving and I'm like, Oh, what, what's going on? And all the whole yeah. diesel things shaking up. We're like, what the season's about to start. We have like practice next weekend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, we do the January practice. It's like, hey, I, don't feel like it's, I, practice. I yeah. feel like it's going to happen again this, uh, this year. I, I I don't know why. I just I feel like it's been like really quiet. Um and I'm like, eh, it's not gonna stay quiet. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. I just feel like it's gonna happen. Speaking I think right of, now people are like waiting to see like what happens and what kind of moves are gonna be made. No one wants to be the first to pull the trigger, you know? And then and then the vultures come in. <laughs> vultures. Speaking of diesel, <laughs> do you think that they're all going to stick together. What's your read on that? You're out in Texas. You kind of got a pulse on that. I um, I, I think it's looking more possible. I think you two are probably going to know a lot more than me on, on, on this because some of the components, right? Like you guys are closer mm -hmm. with mouse and I, I, like this speculation. I think I could see that as if Dalton does leave impact, that that could be a good landing. You know, it almost happened last year, right? Mark's willing to spend to do it. Maybe that one checks out and makes sense to me. Um, I could see them picking up Cody Mikowski. I think that might be a better fit for him. Like they don't have a lot of players um, in that role. You know, they have a lot of really good front players, but they don't have too many, um, you know, twos. Like I thought Kyle Spicka had his best year of paintball in a, in a, in like, you know, he had a great year of paintball. He really did. Kyle played yeah. great, but he was playing out of position too. And hey, hell, maybe that proves that that is his position. But that like they had a guy like Kyle Spicka playing the two on the Drito side, so mm -hmm. um, they do kind of so that could be a good spot for Cody. Um, and I just think that Mark seems to be one of the guys willing to spend the most right now, and I think and I think he's he wants to get it done. I don't think Mark is gonna want to, and he's got two two ways to go, right? He can say, "Hey, I tried that; that didn't work at all. I'm not doing it again." Or we can say, hey, look, I tried it. It didn't work. I always wanted to do this. This was going to be a two-year commitment at least. Uh, I'm going to stick to my guns, and um, and maybe I'll spend more and, and really make sure it happens, or maybe I'll just run it back with the same guys. So not sure what Mark will do, but my uh, my hunch is they're going to fill the uh, strong roster again, and my hunch is that they're going to do better because – they underperformed all year based on their, their talent. So I think it's more of a matter of time. I think even if they don't pick anybody up, they uh -huh. will be a Sunday threat this year. If they stick together, yeah. you know, they, you're right. They absolutely underperformed. Like that team should have done so much better. And you saw a glimpse of it in Philly. They lost a one point game to, to heat on Sunday, you know? Um, and then Jareb got hurt. So it's kind of hard to, you know, then I mean, that's a huge, they're not deep enough to sustain an injury to someone like J-Rab, um, you know, and so they didn't really get a like full look at, at what they can do, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I, I think, I think, uh, if they stick together, which I think they will, I, I don't know. 
I just don't know. I'd, it's interesting. Like you almost wonder if other teams are like, no, let's not pay top dollar for some of those players. Let's just kind of leave them there because they didn't have a ton of success. So it's not as much of a threat. We don't need to try to, because typically that's what you see the top, top teams do. They're like, we want to get that person off that team, not only because they're good, but because on that team, they're so dangerous, you know? Um, and so people might view it as like, oh, we'll just kind of leave them there for now and not make these, these big offers to those players. Um, I'm not really sure, but that's kind of my feeling of it. You know, what, what do you think about that? I mean, I can, I can see it that way. I mean, for me, it's like the, just the, the way it's gone with some of the players they have there. And I have nothing but respect for, for their game. And, and honestly, like they, they make their own choices and I respect that too. You know, they're, they're, they're wanting the value, you know, mouse is elite of elite and he is he is one of those difference makers that yeah he he can warrant what he's asking for and that's why he can always get it um but sometimes you know like i as a team with the budget like i've never reached out to mouse and i hope he doesn't take offense by this because i think he's a fucking phenomenal player but i just know i know i know we can't get you (laughs) yeah well it's not even that like if i could get him you know and and honestly like you know, Alex, I'll tell you one thing about Alex Martinez. He's never told me no to anything when I've said this is what we should do. You know, mm-hmm. he's the most supportive. I don't know all the owners like I know Alex, but he's supported every – he's found a way, right? He's made it happen all the way around. But I also, because of that, I take a lot of care when when asking for of something, for money, for something, for anything, because I know – more than likely, Alex is going to say yes, and it's on me to kind of protect that situation. Oh, so wow. I've never gone after Mouse because if we reach and we get him, like I know the next year, it's been kind of proven that it, it's there's a likelihood that that he might look to move around again. And to me, it's like you're you're shifting your entire team, your culture, right? Your culture of your team for a guy, and if he's just there for one season, um, that's, that's to me, I can't fully co-sign on it. You know, I just, I can't, I can't co-sign on the culture shift. Um, but he's, he's great. I, I don't judge him for, I'm not saying he's a bad teammate or anything like that. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, he's doing what, um, you know, what many professionals and many sports do. Um, you know, he, he has a value and he wants it and people pay him because they think he deserves it. And it's one of those things, but for me, it's like, it's hard to shift the culture uh, on some of these guys that just might, might leave, you know, that it's every year, it's a, it, the next best deal. Um, and that's not the game I want to try to jump into, especially mm-hmm. when I'm not spending my own money. I'm, I'm spending yeah. somebody else who I really care about. Yeah. Well, do we know about uh, J-Rab if he has to have surgery or what's going on with that as well? Because I think that was the rumor, right? That he has to have surgery, but yeah. I don't know if he's been able Certainly. to. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Given the injury that he said he had to his meniscus, it's definitely a surgical repair. But I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I don't know how he was playing on it the way he was. That's crazy That's to crazy. me. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh my! It's crazy. God. And you could tell I he wish was, he was, and he knocked us out of the tournament. He shot like <laughs> everyone on my team. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! He's getting it done. It was awful. It was yeah. awful. Now they're limping around. He's limping around, around shooting all your guys. Yeah. 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 Well, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully he heals yeah, up well. Um, yeah, but he's no matter where you put him or how you play him, the, the kid is just insane at paintball. And uh, we still will see. It's, you know, early. It's going to be December 1st when this is out. And you guys are all listening to it. So we'll see as the weeks roll on what continues to happen. Before this season coming up with all these snake beams. Yeah, let's, guys, go. let's go. <laughs> snake battle. I'm going to have to get in the snake. Yeah, you are. Finally, uh, give right. Greenspan what he wants. Well, that doesn't, you got to drop some of those muscles, dude. You got bulked up. For, <laughs> it's for perfect back. for crawling, yeah, bro. Yeah. No, it's perfect for crawling. Oh, yeah, I can I get down done. fast. I mean, come on. Look at Mouse. Fastest player in the league. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's true. Fastest. I mean, not the fastest crawler. That's Billy. With the little squid arms. Mouse is a faster crawler <laughs> than Billy, for sure. 
Uh, we got to see it. We, you know, that's the race we got to see. That we is, all know who's going to win the foot race. Let's yeah. see the crawl race. That's, that's Oh, dude. Yo, if it's not on my... turf, hold on. If it's not on turf, it's mouse for sure. If it's on turf, Billy does the like stupid push himself thing. That's not realistic. So it's got to be on grass. Yo, Chad uh, George. Yeah. That's tournament is, settings. Chad George is nuclear on the ground with the crawls. He's, I would put him in that but, race. But Chad's, too. Chad's like, well, it's all very different. Like, Billy's like a wild animal. So he's, he's more shootable in the crawl because he doesn't crawl. He's <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Doing all this <laughs> I know what you're shit. talking about. Yeah. He's speed over that. <laughs> Chad is like stealth. He, Chad drags his legs, right? So he's low yeah. and fast, but he's, he's not as, is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, man. Mouse it. crawls down the damn snake fast fast and so okay like if if it's a race kind of thing i think you do have to have like metrics like if you're if your pack's sticking up in the air you lose like a second you know what i mean it's like that's, i agree i agree yeah definitely it's a risk right i think yeah. billy just he takes that risk and he, he and some he, he i don't see him get shot in the pack too much but it's definitely more shootable than some of the guys yeah driving, for but, sure but his 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 mindset is like a whatever he's like planting yeah, yeah, his yeah, arm yeah. and doing this the whole way down yeah Seems to, Damn. seems to do all right for him. I've, I still remember being on like Twisted Factory and Twisted Kids like 20 years ago, seeing Billy on like the Hurricanes, the OG squad, diving in the snake. And it's uh, it's amazing to still see him out there doing what he does. He's one of the best in the world at it. Tommy's part <laughs> squid. Those are his tentacles flapping around. <laughs> They're not arms. Uh, <laughs> yo, um... Before we let you go, if you want to do some shout outs and obviously um, I know I want to plug the Instagram for a uh, project. And then also, I'm not sure if the anodizing um, company, if you guys have an Instagram for that, but definitely let people know where yeah. they can follow on that. Yeah, for whatever reason, uh, I'll, I'll call it. It's probably on a, for myself with a marketing background. It's probably bad business, but both are Instagram easiest to find. Uh, so the best way to find them is to go to to go to like uh, it says project underscore underscore PB. I know Archie elaborate on this, but if you go to my Instagram account, Rye Brand or his Kid Arch, and then you um, there'll be links to 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 at least project. Mine has links to technique and anodizing as well. So that's kind of the, we make you jump through hoops to, to actually see what we want you to see. It's, it's hard. <laughs> hey, if you really want it, you'll find it. Yeah. That's it. yeah. And then you're investing. And it's worth it. I, I spent hours it. looking for this Instagram account. I, I, you get vet. I am getting get it. <laughs> Ryan, brother, thank you for joining us, man. Hope you uh, and the family have happy holidays. Yeah. Um, look forward to seeing you again next season. Hopefully we get another practice out there at X Factor Paintball Park. You guys are always one of the best practices around. So, um, no. yeah, thank you for joining the show. And uh, actually, let's get you back on the show before the season even starts. I'm sure we'll have a lot sure. of cool, fun off-season stuff to talk about. I'm always in. I'm always in. Awesome. So, all right, baby. I appreciate you. Uh, have a great night. All right. <laughs> GG. Peace. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, if you do, please head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the orange Patreon link in the top corner and subscribe. If you subscribe, you get access to the Discord. The Discord is where you get to ask our guests any questions that you want. Well, uh, we kind of filter them, so, you know, it has to be kind of appropriate. Um, but that's your chance to connect with the guests, get your questions asked live on air as you guys have seen and it's an amazing community you guys get direct contact with tyler myself tons of other pros young stevie's in there you guys don't want to miss it and like i said it's an amazing way to support what tyler and myself are doing we want to continue to bring you guys the best content in the paintball world so please help us do so we love you all thank you so much and as always we will see you very soon